Fucking, we got a couple announcements, like tour announcements and stuff, sort of. Uh, uh, Arch Enemy's coming. Arch Enemy's coming with uh, Goat Horror. And who's the other one? Uh, <coughs> sorry, is it Uncured? I think. I think that was the name of it. Yeah. Never really heard of them, but I've seen that, that I haven't, name. I'm, I don't know who they are. Yeah. Goat Horror's amazing, though. You know, and but here's the thing is I've looked up in the past, like I've looked up looked up their set lists from past shows since Angela left mm. and they don't play the deep cuts that often. Like they really Yeah. They kinda are just sticking with the new stuff, which is you know, what a band should probably do unless they're doing like some kind of anniversary tour or whatever, but Yeah. The old stuff is I don't know any of the new stuff. I it's all I want to hear is the old stuff, so it's like ah I'm still on the fence, though. I kind of like, especially since it's at the machine shop. Yeah. And there's still Michael Amit is still in the band. You know, seeing him would be sweet. Yeah. But like you pointed out to me yesterday, it's kind of pricey, like thirty dollars for three bands. <laughs> yeah. When I just paid fifteen to go see Goat Horror and five others and Goat Horror Headline, like, yeah. which is coming up, what two weeks now? Not not next week, but the following. And that oh shit, that means next week's Parkway. Is it? That means we're like six days away from Parkway. <laughs> yeah, it's like next Tuesday. Oh, I've lost track of time then. Yeah, apparently. it's May, bro. <laughs> it's May. Yeah. It became May. So there's that. There's, uh... Have you been following uh, Children of Bodom online at all on Instagram? Dude, they're doing some great marketing right now. They're posting live videos every day from inside the studio while they're making the new record. Huh. Like, cool. they, they, like, they're... Uh, uh, they, I've so I've been watching all of them lay down their tracks. Uh, Alexi started on vocals like yesterday or the day before or something like that. Yeah, huh. it's really neat, oh, yeah. really cool. Uh, check that out. I know I follow them. I, I don't know. Yeah, check out their like story or whatever. You know, they do it mostly on Instagram. I think. Yeah. I'm sure they do it on other ones that, but I only have them on Facebook and Instagram. I I think I personally kind of like Instagram more than. Than any of the others. I like Instagram the best by far. Because yeah. it, it kind of like sorts out all the stuff that, you know, you don't really care about. Yeah. As far as like Facebook and stuff goes. And there's not like really any ads or anything like that. And it's all, you know. Like I could probably get rid of 85% of my news feed on Facebook and not bad and I. Yeah. Not even notice. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I know. Because I, I could. probably only pay attention to about 15% of what's on there. Yeah. But Instagram, I pay attention to a lot more. Plus, they got that that <clears throat> little section of it where you can just like scroll through stuff mm-hmm. that people would like. You like this, so you oh, might yeah. like you know, and just like nonstop stuff. And I found I found a lot of music that way too. Hmm. Seems like mostly just from like cover art and stuff because there's a lot of artists and things on there that usually cool. post like cover art and everything. So I usually try to. Check out the and then uh, crazy looking stuff. Oh, you know, all right, I'll get into that in a minute. But another quick announcement is uh, the stuff going on with Guns N' Roses. They have fucked around and they are releasing things like images on their website and Twitter and this and that and billboards of the five original skulls from the Appetite Cross with the tagline saying "Destruction is coming." And then, like we were just talking about, I noticed that when you go to their website and you click check in, it takes you to GNR.FM, which is a different website, which plays for you like a radio transmission, which sounds like it could... Here's the thing. It sounds like it could be a new song, because I don't recognize it at all. I've played it for a couple of other people. They don't recognize it either. Uh, if I'm wrong, and it's not a new song, somebody let me know what the fuck song that is, <laughs> like because I don't know. So, and I'd be, I'd, I'm someone, I'm one of the few, I think, that would be genuinely thrilled if they, if, if, uh, Axel and Slash started making music together again, so, I'm excited about that, but. When, uh, when was the last one that they put out? Together? Yeah. Use Your Illusion? I don't know. Wow. I don't really? know, I don't know if he was on, ah, uh, no, he was on the Spaghetti Incident, I think. I don't remember. The last good one they put out, Use Your Illusion. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> to be specific. Like, <laughs> the more notable one, I guess. Yeah, I think. Yeah, no. So, like, early 90s. Yeah. You know? Oh. Uh, yeah. 
mainly here, let's, uh, yeah, I guess let's just get into it, because this is going to be intense. <laughs> uh, so, I've fucking gone balls deep, and been, in the last, like, week, I've watched all of Metal Evolution, Global Metal, and Metal Headbanger's Journey. And I've seen Headbanger's Journey a thousand times before. I hadn't seen any of the other stuff. Mm. And... Yeah. Holy shit, man. <laughs> Holy shit. Like, so here's something I wanted to bring up to you. The fucking... I noticed a pattern, okay? Now, from our perspective as young metalheads today, all right, we just are here and we look back and we figure out the old stuff that we like and we find the new stuff that we like. And it's all, you know, there's all these subcategories, sure, but it's all fucking metal. Well, it's like... We have a fucked up perspective on it because we weren't around in the beginning, you know what I mean? Mm. So, for the people that were around in the beginning, a lot of it was created as a result of not liking what was out. That's, yeah, like, that's I can't... And it's okay. So, like, from the very first episode of Metal Evolution, almost all the way to the last... It seems to be the same story over and over. It's like every subgenre that got created was created by because something was popular, something influenced that thing that was currently popular. Mm. Someone didn't like what was popular, so they went back, used the influence of what influenced what is currently popular, tweaked it around, and became the next thing. It's all just that. Yeah. Like leapfrog <laughs> kind of thing going on. Like, like, uh, like, uh, everybody hated, uh, glam, so they created thrash and grunge. Mm. Fucking everybody hated punk, so they created new wave of British heavy metal based on the first quote unquote heavy metal bands like Deep Purple and Black Sabbath. Mm. You know, it's just that like constant leapfrogging that keeps happening where it's like, we don't like what's going on right now. So we're going to kind of dial it back, take it back to the old stuff and figure out a new twist to put on it. And since we've been talking so much about fucking what could potentially come next, there seems to be like this weird, like nothing's really rising up right now kind of a thing. I think that's how we find our answer. And I think the answer is going to be something along the lines of, you know, God, I, I really, I don't know, because I, I don't know what old genres they'd pull from now, because there are so many. Mm. It's not as simple as it was back then, but the, in terms of, like, just not as many bands. Mm. The answer is tech death. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm worried about. <laughs> the that's, answer is tech That's death. what popped in my head, <laughs> and I stopped myself from saying, because I don't want that. See, here, all right, and that's that's why I, um, I think that the extreme metal episode was was so crucial because they talked about you know gojira and bands like that that are doing the more like progressive style yes. of you know it's 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 a little more than just like you know hail satan kind of stuff like it's there's a little bit more like woven into it and stuff and i don't know i just i like it's it's either getting like really fast or like you know kind of like you said like dialing it back and going into more of like a like a um like an atmospheric kind of yeah you know yeah. style that does seem to be part of it is that like because right now what's big you know i guess i guess you point to lamb of god really like they're probably the one of the biggest ones going right now and that's you know kind of just a new version of thrash so and and, and yeah. what's happened in the past is it seems like and thrash is known for being just more straightforward more raw not a lot of effects mm. you know not a lot of atmosphere right. really like punchy in the gut more so yeah. and it seems like every time that anything that's like that is the big thing then something a little bit more progressive and experimental comes next mm -hmm. and then the more gut punchy stuff comes back around later yeah it's just a cycle over yeah. and over and over <laughs> it's fucking crazy but it's also kind of fucking amazing because we keep getting amazing shit coming out oh it's god it's hard to keep track of now 
I mean, it, it goes back to, to the internet, really, and just being, I mean, there's a lot of oversaturation and stuff of everything, but I kind of think that that's, that that's <clears throat> in a sense, that's kind of important. And I think that's a, since everybody has the ability to do everything themselves, like, yeah, you know, somebody, somebody somewhere is like writing something and sitting on something that could potentially be the next, like, oh, dude, you know, that was one of my favorite, um, yeah. in, in the part they talked about or in the episode about shock rock. Mm, that was a sweet episode. It was amazing. I'm episode. so glad that they went into that. Cause that was something that they didn't really talk about a lot. On the, right. On the yeah. headbangers journey. Yeah. yeah. And the way they ended that episode was my favorite mm-hmm. because it showed Sam Dunn asking the lead, I don't know his name, but the lead singer of Rammstein, mm-hmm. Alice Cooper, and a like, uh, I don't know, like, like, like carnival ringleader, like a guy that works oh, yeah. on Coney Island that has a curly mustache yeah. and a top hat and, mm-hmm. you know, all that kind of stuff. Just like the freak show kind of stuff. A freak show guy. Exactly. Yeah. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, so Sam Dunn, it shows in progression him asking all three of them the same question. What could, do you think anything can shock people now? Mm-hmm. Ramstein goes, a public suicide. Alice Cooper goes, well, you'd pretty much have to rip your arm off and eat it on stage. And you can only do that twice. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> and the show, the freak show guy goes, I think it's extremely naive for anybody to think that you can't be shocked anymore because right now there's someone in a basement somewhere coming up with something that is going to yeah. fucking shock everyone. Yeah. And I'm like, you know what? That son of a bitch. Because it is on so- – like, you really just have to get more creative now because things like Alice Cooper and Rammstein and Guar and, you know, all these uh, – Marilyn Manson, Nine Inch Nails, all these extreme almost shock rock bands that used imagery and things like that to – to terrify all you could even argue it all the way back to glam metal what the fuck were they doing they were dressing up like girls to freak people out that's Mm. the reason ask any of them we did that to get attention we did it to freak people out that is a that was the (laughs) entire drive that was the entire motivation to get noticed because nobody because it was shocking it was freaky to people so you know you just have you know i think it i think there's definitely things that are going to be done in the future that are going to shock people. Put it that way. Yeah. I don't necessarily think you have to kill yourself on stage or rip your fucking arm off. <laughs> you know? Uh, yeah. But on the other hand, Alice Cooper chopped his head off every night on stage. <laughs> this is true. <laughs> and, like, I <clears throat> I, I always uh, really love hearing the story that he tells about the uh, the, the chicken. The or chicken whatever it was that Yeah, he's like, I didn't... I had no part in this. He's like, and, everybody else in the crowd just decided that they wanted to rip this chicken to pieces. Yeah. And like, and apparently at that particular show, the first 10 rows were people in wheelchairs. Yeah. So they were the ones that ripped the chicken apart. Yeah. Like, people in wheelchairs. God, what a, what a spectacle. Can oh, you imagine man. like just leaving that? Like, what is, what is the deal with yeah. heavy metal artists accidentally killing live animals on stage? I mean, there's the chicken, there's the bat. Yeah. And apparently neither of them were supposed to. It wasn't planned. Neither time was it planned. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> That's the hilarious the part. Only, the only time it's really ever planned is when it's like black metal. Because a lot of those use like goats and like, you know. Do they really goat. kill animals on stage? So, is that- well, not. I don't know if they kill them on stage, but I know that they use them for like props, like their heads and shit. Oh, Like goats sure. and stuff. Yeah, but, like, I've seen. Yeah. But like, like actually like killing an animal? Uh, uh, maybe somewhere in Norway. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. I don't know if you turn can get a concert away with that. into a ritual. Yeah. That fucking crazy. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if I want to be a part of that. <laughs> but uh, man, no. I mean, and honestly, for the future, uh, what I'd kind of like to do is maybe do like a. Maybe we'll maybe we'll like watch an episode and then immediately after record like an hour long show. Yeah. And do like a little mini series like that <clears throat> of evo- of metal evolution in particular. And then maybe the may- probably global metal as well because there is a lot to get into with that one. Uh, uh, yeah, I got to see that one. Yeah. That's, that one's really hard to find for some reason. It's uh it's on Amazon. Yeah, you know, I got them all on Amazon. As far as like I was like YouTube and shit. Oh like yeah. That, like, yeah. They got it kind of locked down. Yeah. Yeah, they're 
good about that. There, apparently, Preston said he found some episodes of Evolution there, besides yeah. Black Metal. There's there's some on there, but like if if like if you go on the page and stuff, I think there's like one or two of hmm. the of the series, but a lot of them are just kind of like clip episodes hmm. and like shorter segments and stuff. So I tell you what, too, man, I've been watching a lot of Banger TV and Lock the Horns and stuff like that, and I've been learning a lot. There's uh, I watched one yesterday. I think it was it was a family tree debate on on new wave of British heavy metal, and the guy he had on uh, I hope I'm saying his last name right. It's like Mike Popov, like the vodka Popov. Um, <laughs> what a name! But a- <laughs> right, but apparently he co-created. He <clears throat> is the other co-creator of the family tree with Sam Dunn. And this guy hmm. is an author and has apparently written like over 400 books on heavy metal or 40 books or something. I don't remember, but tons and tons of stuff. He's very knowledgeable. And just, just in watching that episode, uh, he'd like off the cuff kind of like mentioned, Oh yeah, before Bruce Dickinson was ever an Iron Maiden, he was in a band called Samson. And in my opinion, his vocal performance on those two albums are his ve- best vocal performances on an album ever. I was like, wait, that's, wait a minute. That's a bold statement. Well, I've that's, never even heard <laughs> yeah. that he was on another band before. So you're telling me there's pre-Number of the Beast on a professionally recorded album, Bruce Dickinson, I guess, too. Like, I thought Number of the Beast was where it kind of started. But mm. nope. Apparently there's two whole albums out there I've never heard <laughs> that's part of the British new wave of British heavy metal movement that huh. that he just murders, you know? Yeah, I so, don't know about that either. So I'm, you know, right, just just in watching that one episode, I'm like, oh my god, there's something by my one of my favorite lead singers of all time that I've never heard, and I'm gonna get to go check out now. <laughs> like, so fucking awesome. But what this episode is about? This episode that was just our little intro. This episode is episode one of what we're gonna do when we've decided we can't. Well, I was thinking about it, and I realized. That, uh, cause we talked about album artwork, uh, a bunch of times when talking about, oh, fuck, I do have an update. I'm sorry. <laughs> this is fucked up, but I do have an update on something. Uh, a couple episodes ago, we talked about how Apple is going to stop selling albums and they're switching everything over to Apple Music. Yeah. Fake news. What? That's really? fake news. Apparently, the Apple CEO said, I don't know where that story came from. And we're not the only ones that fucked up. The Metal Injection podcast also had like a whole half episode about how they were pissed about it. <laughs> All fake news, people, okay? Wow. All fake news. Huh. We're not the only ones that fucked up, though. So, I yeah, that's, that's not... I'm sure it'll happen someday. But yeah. the CEO was like, it is not happening this year. So... <laughs> Slow your roll, everybody. Uh, so th- I did want to that mention was, that update. That was a big deal, too, like that. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it <laughs> that was. That was a huge... When it, it was a big story. Yeah. But for some reason, there's no uh, no word on the Ticketmaster thing yet, I don't think. Well, I do have a slight update on that in a second. Also, it, on a past episode, I did say that I didn't think that Goat Horror was as good on the albums as they are live. Mm-hmm. And I have since changed my opinion <laughs> to say they are just as good on the album as they are live. Yeah. I don't know what I was thinking. <laughs> Sometimes. <laughs> and yeah. uh, in the Ticketmaster thing. So I bought uh, tickets to uh, Judas Priest Eat Purple Oh. Um, at the uh, place in Sterling Heights, sadly. Mm. But what was I going to say about it? Oh, yeah. No, they... Uh, they uh they kind of did the bullshit thing that I've been reading about them doing to people in Canada, and they added a fuck ton of fees. It was crazy, and it was through Live Nation mm. at first, and then it took me to Ticketmaster, and like it di- it added on a fee that I'd never seen before. What was it? Uh, it I think it said something. It it didn't say service fee, but it was basically like the same kind of word, mm. and it was five dollars, and it. Yeah, like I, it was, you know, it made the ticket cost like forty five bucks, thirty dollar ticket cost, and so I had to pay half the ticket price for, of the ticket on top of the ticket just because of all the fees. Once again, here we are back <laughs> at they're adding fifty percent of the ticket cost. Yeah, to your fucking shit. Well, is that what were those like seats or were they just like lawn? Lawn. Yeah, thirty dollars for lawn, which is fine, really? especially for yeah, those bands, dude. Yeah. 
I gotta jump on that. Yeah, definitely jump on that one. That's gonna be, and especially because I was sitting here watching Metal Evolution. I had no idea about Deep Purple like I do now, and now I'm real excited to see them. <laughs> yeah, dude. They were metal as fuck. They before were before metal existed. I would say they were like the one of the like. They were one of the pioneers of the genre. Yeah, uh, that's for goddamn sure. So, but back to now that we've I got the shit out of the way, um. We decided. Uh, we were thinking about it, talking about album artwork, and kind of had the revelation that, like we've said before, you know, we've literally, I, I, we, I've, I've probably discovered somewhere in between thirty and forty percent of the bands that I love today, because I just picked up a cool looking album cover. This is what made me pick it up, buy the album, fall in love with the band. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same. Tons. All right, and on top of that. No, a number of albums have been met with controversy to the point of being banned in countries. Mm. So, and I, I kind of, we were thinking about it, and we realized, like, I can't name a single album artwork artist. Like, who who are these artists that got me into these bands? It's their fault. <laughs> <Yeah>. And <laughs> and who 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 are these artists that are getting banned because their artwork is so controversial? They're getting banned in countries. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, I didn't know. It's... I knew nothing. Mm. I knew absolutely nothing. So what we've decided <clears throat> is we're going to take some deep dives into album artwork artists in a multi part series. It'll start on here. Maybe it'll turn into something more. Who knows? But It'll start on here like this, and uh, we're just going to pick some of our favorite artists, a handful of artists every week, and just find out what's up with some, with, you know, with the album covers. Did they have a bunch of different artists? Did the band create the artwork? You know, who's creating the artwork? How many albums is each person doing kind of a thing? You know, like, what's what's going on with all this artwork? The, you know, all... Uh, uh, <sighs> When you, back, for those of you that remember walking into a CD store, like, the artwork was, like, 90% of what you're looking at in that store. Mm-hmm. It's very, it was a very critical part of the whole fucking thing. <laughs> and I, like I said, I can't name a single one. You ever, you ever think about, like, how weird it is that, like, there used to be a place where you could, you could buy, like, physical music and the only thing like I said the only thing that you'd have to go off of was this like picture this, like, case it was a picture and you were like oh cool you flip it over and it's the same there's just words on it and shit yeah. but like it, so for some reason it was like man like that you know it's it's everything and nothing at the same time it's like, what draws you in <laughs> yeah and like it's it's such a weird thing to think about but like I mean, it, you know there was a point in time where we you know i could not hear these songs on the radio i had nowhere to search them online because it didn't exist Mm. you know like so yeah the artwork was like a giant fucking part of it especially when bands like iron maiden and megadeth uh when i you know i don't know how big of a deal to anybody else this was but when i started buying their albums they were releasing them and like like uh, when the side, like you open the CD on or like close it on the left side, that flat part is like one eighth of an image, and you get all the CDs oh, and it yeah. makes the Eddie's face yeah, or I was Vic's, just looking at that, yeah, actually. or Vic's <laughs> face from Megadeth, yeah. dude. That fuck. As soon as I discovered that, I had every single CD in like two days. Like I just went nuts everywhere I could pick buying all of them just. Just to get the face. You know what I mean? That's yeah. genius fucking marketing right there. And, and, and yeah, it was like, it's what made me fucking get this shit. So, so yeah. That's, that's a, like a collector's thing too. Mm-hmm. Something yeah, I see it online now. It. Yeah. Back when I first started collecting them and I Google searched it in like, oh, six. Mm. Dude, you couldn't find shit about it online. <laughs> Seems like with, um, do you think that maybe like vinyl is kind of, like making artwork more important in a sense, like because when you know when you think about it, you can do a lot more with with that. Like you can print out a lot more and have like a more of like a. Um, oh yeah, I can like unfold yeah. and yeah, but like know, there's multiple layers and stuff to it. But I think that's why the 
CD booklet <clears throat> exists to kind of cover that base. Yeah, plus you've seen like the like the digi packs and stuff that are pretty much like the same thing as vinyl, but just smaller. You know, yeah, you know, like the fold outs and stuff, kind of like you know. I yeah I I don't I don't think it is just because and, and on top of that most of the, when you go to like a current you know like a Best Buy or whatever and you look at the vinyl it's mostly re-releases of old shit. There's not... That's, yeah. Bands do, like, Lamb of God's releasing their new shit on, the Burn the Priest shit on vinyl, you know, and so is Devil Drive. They're all doing it now. Mm. But, I don't think, I think they know that that's not, you know, only a few collectors that's, are gonna be buying that stuff. Yeah. That's I don't true. think it's, uh, sadly, I wish it were. Well, the other, the other thing that I've, like, I've had to kind of stop myself so many times because I've wanted to like dump a ton of cash into it is like the, the splatter and like the color variants and stuff for the vinyl the bands are doing now. They're doing different covers, yeah. like variants and well, stuff? Well, not like like the, the actual vinyl is like a color pattern or it's like, oh, a, you know what on I'm the actual vinyl? Yeah. Oh, so wow. Like, yeah, That's sorry. cool. I haven't seen that, no. That's really neat, though. I like that idea. The only reason I bring up uh, Black Dahlia is because they have a ton of them. Well, let me see if I can find... Yeah, so, like, even on the website on this, they've got tons of, like... Oh, wow. ...color variants and... Of the actual physical record, not yeah. just the cover. Or, like, special editions and stuff and, like, you know, split vinyl, so it's, like, two different colors and, like, picture disc stuff, which are kind of... I mean, it's the same as vinyl, but, like, you know, olive... Well, that's definitely doing something for the artwork. Yeah, I see Black Dolly's got a ton of them. Yeah. They're probably one we should look into because they have crazy ass covers. Yeah. I'm not yeah, I'm not really sure who does their their artwork. Exactly. It's the same (laughs) I don't know if it's the same person. I I guess that's yeah. I'll bet you it is oh dude. Dude, see here's uh, we're about we're about (laughs) to get into it. So but you did just allude to something a little bit. You said a minute ago something about like uh like going through stuff on, like, YouTube or Spotify or whatever and just clicking on it because it looks cool. Yeah. I think that's the next thing. So maybe that is still saving the artwork in a sense because you still have to have something cool to look at and click on. Yeah. You know? So because I've done that on YouTube. Oh, that shit looks cool. I'll click on that band see how they sound for a second. Right. So so maybe that's something to think about at least. But, uh, and and so this for this time I just picked... Like, three of the biggest bands that I could think of to me. We'll start big, I figure, and then get into the, the deeper stuff, like the Black Dahlia murder, the stuff with the real fucking Children of Bodom, like the real crazy, intricate mm. kind of... Because di- um, it's a different kind of art, really, from yeah. from these bands that I'm about to go over. Uh, that's, well, that's the other thing, <clears throat> as far as, like, the difference and how, how much it's, you know, changed and everything is... There was, you know, back when, you know, Maiden and all those other bands, I'm sure you're probably going to talk about it, but like, you know, they, there was, there was more of a, it, it was all pretty much like hand drawn yeah. for the most part. Yeah. Like, you know, there were certain, there were certain ones that were like, you know, digitized and stuff, but like with the times and stuff, like some of the, I mean, there, there's some really terrible ones for mm-hmm. that, <laughs> for that reason, but yeah. I mean, there's also a lot of really like iconic covers that are either made from like straight realism or they're like you know like I've, i i like don't paintings and other stuff i genuinely have no idea what the popular opinion of it is but i know i know the popular opinion of the album led zeppelin 4 the one with stairway on it mm. my opinion one of the worst covers <laughs> is so goofy like what the fuck is that like yeah. it, that's such an iconic album and such a not an iconic cover. <laughs> you know, you never see that cover talked about. Like, yeah. Iconic cover stuff. <laughs> and so there's, Not with them, at least. Yeah. And also, keep in mind, back then, a lot of those bands were releasing on vinyl. Brand new. Yeah. So they, they even... Uh, I remember... Uh, I can't tell you what the name of the album was, but my mom... Well, at my grandma's house where my mom grew up, they had a Queen record on vinyl that had that was like a big fold out thing and i remember that thing being fucking dope Mm. i love that thing but the first band i want to talk about is my favorite band iron maiden because not only do they have incredible cover art but they have a mascot Mm -hmm. eddie you know that uh, 
that's not really i mean I, like it happens like the reoccurring stuff but it's not really something that you see too often anymore not anymore with like mascots and there's stuff. uh you know the only ones i can really think of uh the only ones that ever really like, like there's eddie there's vic from megadeth mm. and he kind of does the same sort of thing as eddie there's but then there's this it's more of a symbol but it's that the head from motorhead that like bull head thing oh yeah yeah uh, and then, uh, which is really, a lot of people usually point to that. Uh, and then there's Children of Bodom. They, yeah, with the Grim Reaper. Right, they yeah. do, they do their thing with that, which is genius. And they're one band that I am going to look into in the future. Uh, but yeah, you're right. Nobody, nobody, and I, it's something I've always loved. Mm. I love having like that, like malleable character kind of put him in wherever you want. Like he does, he had, he wears all these masks, you know what I mean? Like yeah. plays all these roles. <clears throat> I guess. Wh- I don't know, I guess you could kind of argue that, like, there's there's instances of it in, you know, like, rock music and stuff, like, Disturbed as the guy. Oh, yeah, they got it. Like, they the got face a, guy. They got a thing, yeah. I think they just call him the guy. Kind of looks like Spawn. Yeah, a little bit. I wonder if that had anything to do with Todd McFarlane, because Todd McFarlane drew for Iced Earth. And that was something else oh. that drew me in. To this Maybe. topic is my once I found out about Todd McFarlane doing the work for Ice Earth's uh, The Dark Saga album, mm. I uh, was like, "Son of a bitch!" I bet you a bunch <laughs> of comic book artists that who I probably don't know their names either and probably mm. love their work. C- comic book covers are another thing where I got into comics because of how cool the fucking cover was. Yeah. That's an, the exact same thing, but with Eddie. Okay, so this is this really blew my mind. I thought I knew the story of Eddie, and what I knew was not the case at all. <laughs> um, Eddie was created by a guy named Dave Beasley, who was in charge of the band's stage lighting and pyrotechnics, the stage show at the time. Mm. Uh, and keep in mind, this is pre-Dickinson, this is pre-Killers, uh, pre-Iron Maiden album, the self-titled album. So this was, like, what, before the first one? Yes. So, okay. All right. I was and just then, trying to figure out, like, the timeline. Yeah. Right and then uh, that Dave Beasley created, like, a paper mache mask. Mm. And it kind of looked like what we know today as Eddie. And they were, like, taught, they were like, well, what should we name it? And they were tossing out a bunch of different, like, normal names or whatever. And someone said, because you got, got to think about it in a British accent, AZ. Because he's Eddie the Ed. He was saying head, but it sounded like Ed, so it went with Eddie. Oh. Fucking, uh... I don't know if I... Oh. That's what they said in the documentary. Or, uh, yeah. Mm. I, I saw that in the documentary and actually got then backed up by other research that I had done. And then, um, so that that's kind of where it started. It was just like a paper mache mask, and it was kind of like used in the backdrop of the band stage a little bit. And uh, at first, uh, during the last song, it would... He would uh, hook up like a like a... I think he said like a CO2 thing or something like that and spray fake blood out of its mouth. Mm. Uh, but it was just the head. And then quickly after that, they created like a metal sign that they hung behind the band that said Iron Maiden in it. And then next to that was the the face. And that one, its eyes lit up and smoke came out of its mouth at the end of the show. And then the band signed with EMI Records and had manager Rod Smallwood. Not kidding. <laughs> um, and he was looking for something, literally what we've been talking about, to make the band's albums sell better on the shelves. They wanted to mm. do something with the cover to make it different in the artwork. So fucking record companies were thinking about this shit. You know what I mean? This was a big deal at one point in time. He contacted an artist named Derek Riggs after seeing some of his other work. Smallwood took a look at some of Riggs's current prints that he had, and one of them is what we know today as Eddie. He originally created the, the w- one of them was what we know today as the the first album's artwork. That just single f- shot of the face straight on. Mm. Um he, Riggs originally created that artwork uh thinking it was eventually going to be for maybe like a punk band or something. Mm. That's a real gritty looking cover too. Mm-hmm. It matched the sound of the album perfectly. I think. Yeah. Yep. It was really raw sounding and Apparently they talk about this. I did, I haven't seen it yet, but apparently they talk about this in an Iron Maiden documentary called 12 Wasted Years. And according to that, Riggs said uh, he came up with the idea of the face. 
he based it on uh, pictures that he had seen, I think, or something like that, of American an American soldier's skull stuck to the back of a Vietnam tank. And so that's kind of... And then the band, I guess, took a look at the image and said, we like it, just make its hair longer to make it more metal as opposed to punk, because... Mm -hmm punks and the metalheads hated each other back then <laughs> yeah. like hated each other. like fucking in the documentary fucking uh steve harris like is like no punk is fucking the scourge of the <laughs> earth so the 12 wasted years yeah and then uh so they they looked at the image and they wanted to add longer hair to make it more metal that's such a weird i, I kind of forget about that like when we're talking about like the the years and like the the times and stuff with the like how one genre or like one style didn't want anything to do with the other and then and then like after a certain point they kind of started borrowing from each other yep and then, exactly like, i don't know it's just weird to me that at one time it was one separate thing and like the two very separate yeah like, neither side both sides hated each other like hated and then all of a sudden and, and, and you, now you have lamb of god covering a, a bunch of punk bands yeah you know? like <laughs> The biggest metal band in the world, arguably right now, is having a punk cover album. Yeah. Pretty much. <laughs> that is unheard of yeah. in Iron Maiden's time. <laughs> that's very. That's a good point. You know, yeah, I mean, I don't know. I, I guess you can't. Well, I don't know. You could like, you could say that with you know, like hardcore and like death metal and stuff, or like you know, yeah, like the um, that's that's something that that Josta talks about a lot on his podcast, where like you know. At, at a certain point, like, everyone that was into, like, hardcore bands, like, the real, you know, like, New York hardcore and stuff like that, like, they they couldn't really get on shows with, like, death metal bands or, like, any, like, really heavy bands huh. because either, like, nobody wanted to, like, fuck with the other side. Right. <laughs> with the other side. Interesting. So, like, yeah. I don't know. It's just, like, and then, like, you know, like I said, looking at it now, it's, like, it's just a combination I of I hate everything. Burrito Play with Cannibal well, Yeah. It's, <laughs> there's nothing, you know. That's so weird. Yeah. What happens next? So, oh yeah, side note. So there's a guy, another guy at the time. He's the managing director. Rupert Rupert Perry at the time is the managing director. Suggested Eddie should be a part of the band, more of a part of the band stage show. Mm. And got Smallwood, the manager. He was the first one ever to actually dress up as Eddie and walk around <laughs> on stage nice. like we know today. Yeah. So this is all coming from management and shit. I always thought this came right out of the band. Straight from, yeah. You know? Huh. So, the, you know, these guys fucking knew what was up <laughs> and did some amazing shit. Uh, then Derek Riggs uh, provided artwork for Iron Maiden from 1980 until 1992. When Smallwood said they wanted to upgrade Eddie for the 90s, Riggs also later on, uh, or after that, he worked on art for the Iron Maidens, the female cover Iron Maiden band. Hmm. Um, he also worked with Dickinson on his solo career. He also did covers for many others, but notably uh, the Gamma Ray Power Plant cover, um, Stradivarius's Infinite cover, and, and a whole bunch more since. Uh, he's even done some work with Iron Maiden since then. But in 92, for the first time, the band... Um, is accepting contributions from other artists. The first cover Riggs did not have any part of was Fear the Dark, which was done by uh, a guy named Melvin Grant, who also worked on Virtual XI and the Final Frontier covers. Mm. Uh, and he also did the artwork for the reincarnation of Benjamin Briggs single. Another, So after 92, a whole bunch of artists kind of contributed for singles and, and artwork. So I'm, I'm kind of just sticking with album artwork here. There's a lot of other artists that I, I'm not naming, but here are the ones that stuck out to me. Um, Hugh Sim, S-Y-M-E, worked on the X Factor cover, but also Hugh Sim led me down. Hugh Sim is a rabbit hole, all right? He has also done every single Rush album, including... Obviously, Caress of Steel and created the band's signature Starman logo uh, for the uh, uh, 2112 album. A and the 2112. He did that cover, too, is what I meant to say. Uh, he He's also done covers for Bon Jovi, Whitesnake, Queensryche, Quiet Riot, Megadeth. He did Euthanasia and Countdown to Extinction. He's done covers for Tesla and Dream Theater and tons of other artists those are just like the metal ones that mm. i wanted to pull but he's also done for like t 
Tom Petty, like tons of other artists. Yeah. Uh, so he's a whole fucking album artwork rabbit hole ar- artist to go down. Which uh, which Maiden cover did he do? He's he did Final um Frontier, no, no, no 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 that was uh oh. that was uh sorry that was Melvin Grant oh, Hugh man. Sim uh, the only Maiden cover he did was the X Factor oh one okay. of the bad ones. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's probably why I didn't yeah. pick up on that. Virtual, and Melvin Grant did Virtual XI, <laughs> the other bad one. Yeah. And he also did Euthanasia, too. Which... But that's a good album. Yeah, yeah. I think I think Euthanasia had Symphony on it, didn't it? No, that was... Uh... Or Countdown. That was Countdown yeah. to Extinction. Sorry, yeah. sorry, sorry. <laughs> Euthanasia does have something on it. Maybe Skin of My Teeth or something. I don't know. No, that's... Uh, that's still Countdown? That's, no, I think that's... Uh, um, yeah, maybe that is Countdown to Extinction. I know I had something on there. I like. I don't remember what. Um, yeah, anyway, yeah. Then there's the next guy, uh, Tim Bradstreet. He did the cover for A Matter of Life and Death, which I love because that's that's like when I got into Iron Maiden, the first album they released after I got into him was that one. So that's I like that one a lot. Uh, he's also though known. He's a graphic artist, and he's more specifically known for the work he's done on Punisher comics. So he right yeah. there is another comic book yeah. artist. Again, Tim Bradstreet. He's done a lot of work on Punisher. He's a graphic artist. He's he assisted Guillermo del Toro with visuals during uh, Blade Two, and he's also done cover art for Wolverine, Alien, Star Trek, Xena, Constantine, Black Panther, Luke Cage, Iron Man, and many more comics. So, so he went from doing album covers to. Mm-mm. He did comics yeah, first. He, okay. So a matter if you look at the cover of Matter of Life and Death and look at some of his Punisher work, it's almost identical. It's like, damn, he kinda hmm. got that from Punisher a little bit. Took that style and yeah. put it towards something. But yeah, and that's um oh. that's kind of where yeah, that's kind of where I landed, it looks like, on uh on Iron Maiden in that uh so basically Eddie, the thing that and in the most iconic covers like Power Slave and Number of the Beast, Trooper, um, all that was uh Derek Riggs. So he's he's the uh he's the artist. Many other artists since then have contributed and have done some cool stuff. I like the cover uh for Final Frontier, Matter of Life and Death's great. And some of you know like the the, the, the uh Somewhere Back in Time Best of album is a really great cover. Who did uh the last one? Final Frontier. No. Uh Oh, X Factor. No, 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 no. Sorry, sorry, sorry. I have it right sitting right there. Book of Souls. There <laughs> yeah. we go. Uh, Book of Souls, I think. Did I ever, because I, I got a vinyl of that. I don't know if I ever showed it to you. Oh, no, you, no, you haven't. That's yeah, tight. like, it, like, folds out, and it's got, I know, kind of like what we were talking about, but, like, I don't know, it's got, like, this weird try. I mean, you've seen it. Yeah, but, Like, yeah. you know, the whole thing is, like. You want to know something c- cool about that? Oh, yeah. You want to know something cool about that is I actually recently watched an interview with Bruce Dickinson talking about the, re- the vinyl release of that album. Mm. He said, for that artwork. They actually got a Mayan translator to translate all the hieroglyphs. So all the hieroglyphs wow. that you see on that artwork actually translate to something that they picked. Dude, that's sick. Yeah. It's fucking insane, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> that's that's some like I don't know. Oh, they got that's, into it. Yeah. They got into oh. it. For sure. Which is great. That's that's the other thing I really like about and just what in particular, you know, heavy music does so well is like with, with the artwork and everything. A lot of times it's either really simple or mm-hmm. like there's there's a, like so much to look at that well, I mean we were talking about it on the last like um the last one or one before that but like you know you'll look at something and then you know there's like you'll find something new if you're just kind of like you know oh, staring yeah. at it for long enough and yeah like, yeah you know I don't know, I just I always really liked how how intricate and um really like thought out a lot of it is mm-hmm. some of it isn't but. You know, the ones that really go, you know, head first into it are like, you know, those are, I think those are the ones that probably stand out the most. Yeah. And those are usually the better albums to argue. Well, not always, but I kind of feel like when, you know, when there's a lot more detail and time put into the artwork that I think it either like plays off the music or. Yeah. I don't know if that makes any sense. But no, like, it, it does. Just, I it, think it does. Yeah. It just seems like the more detail it's in it, the more like you know passion and like time was put into it so and i thought i had written down who did that cover but now i'm not finding it and it's gonna drive me fucking nuts 
I actually found, man, I actually found a list of, like, artists that they had used at one point, but now I'm not finding it. But yeah, that is a good cover. I do like that one. So yeah, but yeah, that's, uh, no, I agree with you. And I think that's a good point. Uh, but that's kind of like, as, as, uh, in terms of other artists besides Derek Riggs that have worked on it, those were kind of like the most notable ones. To me personally, the ones that had worked on eh, stuff. And the ones I didn't list were pretty much ones that had only worked on, um, like singles and things like that. Singles artwork and stuff. Except for apparently the fucking Book of Souls. I missed that one somehow. I just heard I said that almost 92 minutes. Yeah, it's huge. That is insane. It's huge, Al. <laughs> yeah, no. When they, were, when they were in the studio, they were like, well, uh, if we want this to be a single album, then we have to stop right... We're done. We're done. We have to leave. <laughs> in the end, Bruce Dickinson that said that's kind of like right when we felt like we were really getting into it. It's yeah. so like, fuck it, double album. <laughs> oh, that's right. Yeah, they people did, don't make 90-minute albums yeah. anymore. Like, that's not... That's not really heard of. I don't think anybody has that, like, I don't know, that much of an attention span. Yeah, there's only, like, eight songs on it. Yeah, <laughs> half, dude, half of them were, like, five minutes long. Yeah. Over five minutes. <laughs> I think the last song is, like, what? Like. I think there's a 15-minute long song on that seems like it, album. yeah. Yeah. Man. Yeah, no, they just, they're <laughs> monsters. They're beasts. Yeah. That's one of those, like, I gotta... Um, yeah, sit down. You, or, yeah, either do that or, like, I gotta be doing something. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. To just, like, have Driving. it on and just playing, yeah. For a long time. Yeah, because otherwise <laughs> I'll think about it too much. Yeah. And, or, like, I'll get distracted and think, you know, kind of... About other things, yeah. yeah kind of go into something else. <laughs> <sighs> but, you know, unquestionably, Slayer... Or, I mean, <laughs> Iron Maiden... Uh, they do have some good covers, though. Is, is <laughs> yeah. They're, by far, to me, their cover art has been some of the most influential just because, like, it, it was a driving force for me to get Eddie on a t-shirt at one mm. point in time, you know, before I had ever seen them. How much... Uh, how much you think the original, like, stage head is going for? Oh, if or it still exists. To, yeah. You know, like, if you guys were to make a little thing like that right now, how long do you think it would honestly exist for? Like, <laughs> probably get destroyed after know. a couple shows. Maybe, yeah. I don't know. <laughs> Someone would fucking do something <laughs> violent. And <laughs> yeah. Uh, but, yeah, if it exists, oh, I'd pay hundreds of thousands if I had it for that thing. Are you kidding me? <laughs> you just have that in a case on a shelf. Yeah. yeah, no, that's that's Eddie. That's the original that's, incarnation. Yeah. That's Eddie. Before that's, his name was Eddie. Yeah. Like, oh my god. That'd that's be insane. Gotta, that's gotta be a thing. Somebody somewhere has to... Unless they just kept it. <laughs> yeah. You know, which is One of them also has it. Very, yeah. Steve Harris or something. Yeah. Dave Murray. So the next band I want to talk about is uh, one that I've been diving into deep lately. They're one of the biggest heavy metal bands in history and that we're go going to see soon. Slayer! Gotta oh. talk about Slayer. Because Slayer is one of the first metal bands who's who was very criticized for their cover artwork, getting banned in countries and things like that. So mm -hmm. Slayer... Slayer was formed in 81 by uh, Tom... I don't ever know how to say his last name. Arya? I think it's... Araya? I've always said Araya. Araya. Okay, yeah. Tom Araya. Or, or Araya. I don't know. Um, Jeff Hanneman and King. Uh, and then 83 saw the release of their first album, um, Show No Mercy. Uh, they had been controversial since they started, just because their violent lyrics, mm. uh, satanic imagery, stuff like that. In 96... Um, this is kind of a side note, but in 1996, the parents of a murdered daughter tried to sue Slayer because she was murdered by Slayer fans in a satanic ritual. Um, seems like I heard about that. They've been accused of being racist, which is absolutely not true. Um, because of, there was one lyric, I don't remember what it was that people thought they were Nazis because of it, but it. Carrie King was like, no, let's, we're talking <laughs> about the exact opposite, actually. Fucking idiots. <laughs> um, uh, they, they've, uh, and as, as recently as 2006, they were banned in India. Interestingly. Oh, dude, I forgot about some of their, interesting, about yeah, it now. yeah. Got some really good Just ones. wait for it. <laughs> <laughs> interestingly, um, the, now I did find this, this, I didn't, you know, nobody mentioned this, it just kind of popped in there. So you remember the Filthy Fifteen? The list of Tipper Gore that D. Snyder tore mm. apart. 
but <clears throat> before Congress. Real quick, to like to this day, still one of the great, like one of the greatest moments. Just, like, just I never get sick of hearing him tell that story. Oh, I never it's get like, sick of seeing the footage. Yeah, like. Yeah, no, it is. That's amazing. It's one of the mo- greatest heavy metal moments yeah. ever. And I, like, I don't think that things would be the same now if that nope. never happened. Nope. You know? And you want to know what else? He was, you know, in the documentary. He's like, he he felt the way he described it in Headbangers Journey was that he felt like he was carrying the torch in for heavy metal. Dude, you were carrying the torch in for art. Really? And all yeah. artists. It yeah. wasn't just metal bands that were on that list. Right. And where I'm going with this, Slayer somehow didn't make the Filthy 15. That is like, now that you say that, it seems like there was a lot of like weird stuff that was yeah. on there that was just kind of like, like really? Like, like ACDC <laughs> made it. Yeah. But Slayer did. <laughs> yeah. So keep that in mind, people. Yeah. According to the United States government in the 90s, Slayer <laughs> was more tame than you shook me all night long. They were more scared of sex than <laughs> violence. Which kind of goes along with a lot of fucking media bullshit. Yeah. That's another story topic yeah <laughs> for a different time though their their artwork has always been a reason for their controversy though <sighs> slayer was the first band that i really ran into problems finding information mm. iron maiden i found i found all of the album artwork artists easily and they were so damn good i might even follow rabbit holes down and do the rush <laughs> guy on another episode or something like that no because it's so damn interesting. Slayer, I could find almost nothing. I could find almost nothing about who originally did their artwork, if it was a bunch of different artists, if they had the same artists over and over. Mm. I found nothing. Uh, I did find the one thing I found, and luckily it was for the albums that I really wanted to know about anyway. Larry Carroll. Carroll. C-A-R-O-L-L. He's an artist, but he's also he is also a former Los Angeles television news reporter. That's, but that's he's weird. responsible for Slayer's most notable and controversial <laughs> artwork. He did the covers uh, for Rain and Blood, okay. South of Heaven, and Seasons of the Abyss. And also recently, the reason why they got banned from India in 2006, he did the artwork for The Christ Illusion. The Christ Illusion features an image of Christ mutilated with missing limbs in a sea of blood with severed heads. Dude. And it was banned in India in 2006, but since has become available. Mm. Joseph Diaz, D-I-A-S, of Mumbai Christian Group Catholic Secular Forum took, quote, strong exception, end quote, to the original artwork and issued a memorandum with the Mumbai Police Commissioner in protest. Uh, on October 11, 2006, EMI Record Company announced all stocks had been destroyed and there were no plans to release the album in the future in India, but since then it has been really, I think a censored version of the cover. Has been released. That seems to be what a lot of bands do, is they'll throw out a censored version of the fucking cover, which... Yeah. I I know uh, I know Cannibal Corpse has done that. They've had to. And that's why I talked about Slayer first, kind of the one that I couldn't find a lot of information on, because the real controversial one, the Mac Daddy of this topic, mm-hmm. is Cannibal <laughs> Corpse. That's yeah. right where we're going next. Yeah. I just, I just want to say that I would put Christ Illusion at probably... So, like set aside the artwork, which is just sick. <laughs> Love like, it. Really, like I don't know, just like the coloring and like everything that's kind of going on in it. But that, like to me, I think that was one of the because, like I don't know, when I when I got into them, it was I mean obviously it was Rain and Blood, but I think I I kind of went a little further and um I think at the time that was their newest one that was coming out. Mm-hmm. And then, so I heard that one, and then I went back, and then God Hates Us All was the other one. Oh, okay. I, saw I just that. ordered that album. Yeah, oh, so good. But yeah, dude, they got they got some, like, a lot of, like, imagery and stuff that... I th- and, I, and, and that's, I'm glad I found the guy that did those covers, because those are definitely my favorite, and those are the mm. ones that kind of really look similar. Here's the thing, though. Here's the thing is, that's weird to me, is that he's, it's brilliant work but the type of art isn't meant to look realistic it's not realism it's at all yeah it's 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 not cartoony either it's hard to describe it it's almost you know what a- it's almost like someone drew it on a cave wall kind of <laughs> it kind of looks yeah. like that almost at least the christ illusion that yeah it kind of is like that sort of art 
I think it's more the coloring on that one. Yeah, yeah probably. Yeah. Well, yeah, because I think the the one for Rain and Blood was like that one too. Kind of looks like it's got like that yeah. oil painting look yeah, to it. You know, an oil painting. Yeah, is, there we what go. What is the word for that? I don't know. We're we're not art experts. No, um, but there's a like I don't know. I'll think of it, but. And, and there's a word to describe what you're talking about. It, that, like it's just it's just strange to me that surreal. something surreal surrealism, surrealism. It okay. <laughs> it's it's yeah. strange to me that that sort of thing would get banned, especially in 2006, when there are much more realistic, more violent images on album covers that you know are aren't banned. Yeah, current at least that early. I just think it was you know, because of who it was. I think yeah. the, the name by itself. Slayer. Yeah. You know, because, like, everybody kind of knows what you're talking about, and then, like, you know, you see that and everything, but, God, that that album is such a... <laughs> it's good. <laughs> it's just, yeah. There's so many good songs on that. So, next up, Cannibal Corpse. So, Cannibal Corpse, like, that, their, my favorite cover by them is The Wretched Spawn. That cover is my favorite cover because... I remember buying that album. I bought that album at a place that doesn't exist anymore. It was on the corner of Albert and Abbott in East, downtown East Lansing called CD Warehouse. When I was flipping through and I saw that cover, it like made my stomach turn. And it immediately, <laughs> it immediately made me feel like I was, I was holding something I was not allowed to be holding. <laughs> that was the immediate <laughs> feeling. And then the next thought that ran through my head was the look I'm going to get <laughs> from the cashier when I buy this thing. Oh man, that is, is the best. Going to be amazing. <laughs> like, so just the whole, like if it shocked me just looking at it that hard, like it's got a shot. It's whatever's on here. His guy didn't have a Cannibal Corpse album at that point in time. I bought that album yeah. because of the cover. I got into Cannibal Corpse because of that. And that's a really good one too. Oh my god! I like like that, that cover though is so insane. It's a bunch of aliens ripping themselves out of a or demons or whatever ripping themselves out of a woman's body, yeah. naked body. Fucking! I looked at that and it's it's something. It's one of the things that I can point to. I was like. When I first saw that, I was genuinely shocked. Yeah. And if it can shock me, I have <laughs> to own it. And it became one of my favorite covers ever. So oh, man, they I, got, they I had so many good ones. I had to have Cannibal Corpse be on the first episode of this because their their cover is known like their uh, when people think of controversial cover art, they think of them usually. I really gotta we really gotta watch that uh, that Centuries of Torment. What's that? Yeah, it's it's that. That documentary I was telling you about where it like <clears throat> um it goes into the first twenty five years of Cannibal Corpse. Dude. And it like any everything from like the Barnes area yes. to like what happened with, with Corpse Grinder and like how how like they had to like everything with uh um like the alternate stuff and being banned and everything and they go into like the Ace Ventura shit. Hmm. And like, dude, it's like Oh, Where'd you find that at? It's I'm pretty sure you can find it on YouTube. I gotta watch but, that. Yeah, it's I think it's like I don't know, it's it's a pretty long movie, but Good. like it goes in like super in depth to them. Because off like if if I uh you know if I had made you know if I'm, if I'm Sam Dunn and I make it Metal Evolution, mm. the next one I make after Extreme Metal is Death Metal. Like that's the one that sticks out to me where I'm like, I really wish I knew more specifically about that genre than mm. I do. Yeah. And yeah, they're kind of they're one of the pioneers of it. They're definitely the the biggest, highest grossing death metal band of all time in terms of record sales. No. Yeah. Uh so I yeah, I'm definitely there, gonna check that out. There's people that don't even really listen to death metal that know who Cannibal Corpse is yeah. for one reason or another and most, most of the controversy. Of, yeah, most of the time it's because of the covers, which is mm -hmm. You know, which is really saying something, I think. So they, uh, they're, an, obviously, um, they started in the late 80s and they released their first full album, Eaten Back to Life, in, uh, 1990 on Metal Blade, which I didn't know. Metal Blade was the first one to sign them at first, uh, which is awesome. Uh, since then, you know, they've been banned in, so, so this is all since, this is all less than 30 years old. This is brand new. This is, this That's is, what's so crazy about yeah, it. Yeah, <laughs> recent information. The, they're being banned in places like Germany, Russia, Australia, and in Russia and Germany, they weren't even allowed to play. They weren't even allowed to come at all. I wonder how old Vakin is. 
Anyway, in uh, in the in 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 the United States, uh, senators went after the band in '95 and '96, same time as Slayer, trying to, but <laughs> they were literally trying to convince record companies to dump, quote dump twenty recording groups for being the most offensive. End quote. They're trying to get pressure the record companies to dump the artists because at that point in time, that was the only way to get your music made. Insane trying to censor shit like that like holy fuck and, and obviously nowadays this is all long over you know yeah. as of and like i just said as of 2015 they sold two million albums worldwide making them the top selling death metal band of all time mm-hmm. but yeah the artwork has always been universally cited the only you know one of the ways they've been able to get around some of the banning is uh censored covers and stuff like that but so who the fuck is this artist whose shit is so controversial that it's getting banned in countries in the 90s. No. Who the fuck, who the <laughs> fuck is this guy? Who made that cover that literally made me shocked when I saw it? His name is Vince Lockie, L-O-C-K-E. Oh, dude, yeah. And That's right. I, I thought it was somebody else. He has created all of their album artwork yeah. from top to bottom. Now, I'd really love to watch that documentary because maybe it sheds a little bit more light on the fact that I can, f- I could not find a shred of information mm. about how him and Cannibal Corpse got together and how it all even began. Do you remember anything from the documentary by any chance? Dude, it's been, it's been, a or since at least, I've seen it. do you, do you at least them, remember them mentioning it? They, I know they talk about it. Okay. I know that. So maybe there is a place I can go to get this information. Yeah. Cause I know that. I'm pretty sure it was the the guy from Metal Blade that was talking about like where all their band from and like that you know like oh I gotta we had to get alternate covers here here and here and we couldn't sell it here so we had to do this and like uh, it's all in, like foreign countries and stuff and kind of like I don't it's probably just watch that <laughs> yeah because that well, like dude it's so good and like it it touches on a lot of stuff that kind of like what was not to go on like a tangent about it or whatever but like. You know, it goes into kind of, like, what was happening in the area at mm-hmm. the time mm-hmm. with all, you know, with, like, the up-and-coming bands, like, you know, Morbid Angel and yep. everybody else kind of from that area. And then, you know, it's, it spans out and just... No, yeah. as far as far as the artwork aspect of it, I don't really remember if they okay. if they talk about how that happened. Or yeah, not. it seems to be uh, all the information I could find was people talking about how controversial and everything is, but never, like, who is the guy that... Or, or, you know, how did you guys even get together, talk about making album artwork or anything? Well, he began work in 86, illustrating a zombie horror comic called Dead World. And my thinking, my guess at the moment with being able to find no information is somebody from Metal Play saw Dead World and was like, this guy could probably make a cool album cover. Mm. Maybe. I don't know. However, uh, yeah, he created every cover, including Wretched Spawn. And most notably, born, raised, currently lives in Michigan. What? Vince Lockie's a Michigan boy. What? Dead serious. He lives down in like Southgate or some shit. I don't know. Dude, I don't know. That's, like, that's where he was born. I know, he was yeah. born in Detroit. But, yeah. And get this. Damn. One of the lead singers, one of the girl lead singers of Butchered Babies, also born in Detroit from Michigan. Seems like I heard about that. Like, went to like Fowlerville or some yeah. shit. Like, holy fuck. <laughs> yeah. So, I, <laughs> Vince Lockie, the guy that created all that artwork, who's been being banned in countries. Just from right here. Right here, in our wow, backyard. Man. Yeah, I didn't, I did not know that. Unfucking That's believable. Insane. That blew my, I was like, oh, yeah. what? <laughs> like, are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I didn't know anybody from Michigan had anything to do with Cannibal Corpse. Like, they're a fucking, <laughs> I've always associated them with Florida. Yeah. God, that's insane that blew my mind <laughs> and I, so this is what i mean by the rabbit hole of research that you end up finding some oh, crazy <laughs> shit dude yeah. uh yeah no that's it's kind of you know it's kind of as far as i got because i couldn't find how he hooked up with cannibal corpse i couldn't find any interviews with him talking about the artwork or anything like that but vince Lockie from michigan he has appeared at some of the uh like michigan comic cons and stuff. Uh, I have. I don't see his name on any lists yet this year, sadly. But man, like imagine getting that cover, Red Spawn signed by him. And he has a website you can buy prints, Cannibal Corpse prints, 
from him and stuff like that. Also, Derek Riggs mm. has a website where you can buy Eddie Prince done original artwork by him. Oh yeah, I bet they go for not that much. Oh really? Like they, I mean, there's different. There, he has different ones for different pricing levels. But like, I, you know, you can get one for like fifty bucks or so. Mm. Like a fucking original. Is that? That's, that's Locky's his site? website. Yeah. yeah, yeah. He just did a new one. I think. Yeah, that thing. He just he just posted on Facebook about whatever that is. Some new artwork for Cannibal Corpse or something. That's off. I think it's off the new one. But yeah, man. That guy's right here, and he's got some amazing shit. It's, dude, I never knew that. <laughs> I honestly, it's kind of blowing me away right now. He, I like, never lives, knew that he was. And it's not even like from, from somewhere far away in Michigan. It's like somewhere yeah. right around like this, within an hour of where we're sitting right now. Yeah. Like ah, the guy, the, the mind that all that came out of the 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 butchered up birth cover, the fucking wretched spawn eaten back to life. I had that on a T-shirt. <laughs> it was my favorite T-shirt to wear to high school because. Everybody, somebody would say something about it at some point during the day. Yeah. Guaranteed. <laughs> I need a new one because I think I lost it. But yeah, man. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. Blew my mind. Well, if if on the off chance you ever hear this, next album, we're looking for artists. Dude. Uh, <laughs> that's could you imagine? You Dude, he's got a Facebook. I added him as a friend. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's probably Like, good. he's got a public <laughs> figure profile, yeah. but, like, when I searched just his name, the his normal profile is the first one that popped up. So, yeah, no, I added him as a friend. And if, I, if it got to the point where I could, literally, there's no other way to find information about how he hooked up with Cannibal Course, maybe I should just ask him, mm. right? Like, I don't yeah. know. Like... <laughs> He's, like, a fucking legend to us, so, like, it feels weird, but, God, I don't know, he lives here. He's oh, one yeah. of us, yeah. right? Like, <laughs> I don't know. So maybe I'll hit him up. Maybe he'll do an interview. I don't know. That'd be... Dude, that'd be... unfucking real dude. Yeah. I would... I have goosebumps thinking about it, so... Yeah, no, that... Uh, that absolutely shocked me. That's the big that's the big bomb drop for this episode, honestly, in my research that I found was... Holy fuck, one of my favorite artists of all time is from here same place i'm from so <laughs> oh yeah he does have artwork for sale yeah 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 it's all right there i'd love it if he showed up at a comic-con and we could oh. get something signed and meet him and everything that yeah, would be man. unreal uh, i think he was at like the 2006 motor city comic-con like as or, or 2016 uh like i said i don't see his name on the list for this year yet, but we also, this is also the first year where they're going to have the Michigan Comic Con down at Kobo in August, and... I've been seeing a ton of stuff about people coming to that. Yeah, yeah. Motor City, I, whatever it is. Oh, Motor City or um, Michigan? My, pretty sure it's Motor City. Okay, I yeah. about that, though. Whichever well, one is the biggest of the two. Motor City, this is Michigan's first year. Oh, okay. Motor City, it's like the fourth, fifth, sixth year, something like that. It's probably Motor City, though. Uh, and it's also, like... Coming up here in like a weekend or two, mm. so it's it's Dude, probably that'd be, that'd be cool to go to. Oh, I'm going. Yeah. There's actually uh, an artist there that I am specifically going for. I'm almost I I'm thinking about it now. I am I am as nervous to meet this guy as I would be to meet Vince Locky, Mister Locky, <laughs> um, or Lock. I don't know how he says his name. Yeah, uh, yeah. But yeah, no, the guy, the only. There were th- three guys. The only one that's still alive that created the character Man Bat is going to be there. Oh, wow. And I'm going to go get my man- some Man Bat shit signed by him. Oh, yeah. I have the first issue. I'd like the first issue, and if I'm not too nervous, maybe I'll ask him to sign the original animated series action figure. I'm going to be nervous. <laughs> Real nervous because he's a fucking. He created one of my favorite characters of all time. Do you gotta get like tickets for that? Is that like, you can free? just walk up. Oh. It's like twenty bucks or something like that. You can buy tickets early for like a weekend pass, and it's mm. cheaper. But I only go for one day usually. Yeah, but when, yeah, it's a blast. When is that? Um, I want to say like the weekend of May nineteenth, somewhere around there. I think it's actually the weekend. No, it's next Tuesday is Parkway. Mm. The following Tuesday is Goat Whore. The following weekend after Goat Horror is Comic Con, I believe. I like to try to go to that. Huh? I like to try to go to that. Yeah. If you'd want to go, definitely. It's dude, yeah. all it is is like you walk in, it's the biggest comic book store you've ever been in, and there's a bunch of celebrities. <laughs> like that's <laughs> all it is. Wow. The biggest, Can't coolest handle. comic store ever, and a whole bunch of like characters and people you love just mm. sitting at their booths and 
tables and dude last year fucking one of the ramones was there what? and like didn't even have a line <laughs> he was just sitting there just chilling that's so weird yeah i feel like that would be like a bigger deal yeah I don't know. <laughs> rob fucking schneider was there i forget there's there's a there are a handful of actors coming this year that i think are really cool but my biggest draw is neil adams definitely mm. see him man bat Hashtag man bat. <laughs> if you pay attention to our posts, I always hashtag man bat. <laughs> yeah, I saw that. <laughs> and dog man. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, yeah, man. Yeah, that's going to be a good time. I I, I hope that uh, the cannibal, Vince Locke, Locke, shows up as one of them. But it would have kind of made more sense for him to show up at the horror film festival, the Motor City Nightmares that took place, I think, two weekends ago. But I didn't. I wanted to go to. Didn't end up going, sadly. But I didn't get to a couple of like conventions and like, cause like I it always it always just looks just like cool. They're a lot of fun. Yeah, they're a whole lot of fun. Plus, I, like I I don't know like I've every so often I'll get into looking at a uh, like like cosplay stuff. Oh, dude, it's awesome. It's it's insane. Like just how much like detail and like time and you know everything is put into these costumes that are all like some of them are like gigantic yeah like, true to scale and stuff it's like the alien know. and predator ones yeah are my favorite dude. and you always see a bunch of dope ass predators walking around yeah. it's like, oh. <laughs> see i've if there's any coming up i know that some of the detroit ones are fairly good like big stuff what's the what's the big one that's around here Maybe it's not. There is a Lansing Comic Con, uh, or, or it, I don't know if it's called that, but is it uh, is Shudo Con? Oh, that is, is one. That, yeah, that happens around here. Yeah, I don't know if that's the one you're talking about, but I think no. that's more of like an anime. Yeah, that's an anime convention. Yeah, um, which would still be kind of cool because that you know, I don't know, I'm not super into anime or whatever. But, it, but just to, there's you know. always comics and stuff too. Yeah, you know? yeah. Uh, the honestly, the one I would think that you'd want to go to more than any other is the Motor City Nightmares. Uh, because, like, every year... Let me see, see I this. Didn't, I don't even know about that. Yeah. Every year, there's Malcolm McDowell, who played uh, the old guy yeah. in that, and also was in also was in Clockwork Orange. Heather uh, Langenkamp, who was a girl, she was in Friday the 13th. Or, or Nightmare on Elm Street, sorry. Mm. Uh, Linda Blair, who I think played uh, The Exorcist. Or, or, or uh, not the exorcist, the girl that was possessed in the yeah. exorcist. Sid Haig mm. is there like every year. <laughs> Curtis Armstrong, that guy. Oh, wait, that's Booger from Revenge of the Nerds, I think. I don't know, maybe I'm wrong. Looks like him. Adrian Barbu. Lita fucking Ford. Wow. Uh, Xander Berkeley. Yeah, like a whole bunch of people that are in like film and the horror genre. Last year the lineup was a little bit better, but yeah, like Sid shows up every fucking year. Like, he'd be really sweet to see. They got a face. Jonathan right? Breck, who at one point played the Creeper from Jeepers Creepers. What? Yeah. Damn. I don't know which movie he played him in, but he was one of the Creepers. Dude, that'd be that'd be awesome to figure out, like, what that was like. Yeah. You know what I mean? All that makeup. Yeah. One of the girls from Halloween 5. I do recognize her face. She's been mm-hmm. in other stuff. Yeah. Timothy Quill has something to do with Army of Darkness. See, I think... The Army of Darkness people should be at every one of these. And the Evil Dead people. Oh, who are you? Jeff Zornow? has something to do with Godzilla, but I don't know what. What was the name of that? Motor City Nightmares. Definitely going next year. Missed it this year because I had other stuff going on. Sadly. It but the year... It says you went. In 2000... <laughs> yeah. <kidding>. In 2000... <laughs> uh, so this was 18... That means in 2017, last year, is uh, Jason Mewes was there. And Preston got that... Alien action figure Oh, that was signed. the... I thought that was a comic con. No, that was yeah. Nightmares. Oh, okay. Yeah. That was sweet. Yeah. Yeah. They have a good lineup, usually. I'm trying to find if they have, like, past... Past guests? Yeah. Might be easier to find on Facebook. Like, old... Yeah, that's kind of what I'm looking at. Old pictures. <laughs> if you, like... If you had a chance to meet somebody, like... For me, it would be probably one of the guys that played Michael Myers either in the newer movies or in past movies. If if you had the chance to, like, interview anybody. In horror? Yeah. Because there's so many, you know, there's so many things, like, I don't know, either either him or, uh, who's, who's I, the... I, honestly, it's kind of a cop-out answer, but, and I'm going to come up with another first pick, but my genuine first pick would be Rob Zombie. Yeah. 
That, okay. Yeah, that's fair. That would be cool. Because I really think... Well, I mean, just, it seems like he's, like, just, because, I mean, he's been, like, I don't know, he's been in, you know, he's done music and, like, movies and Exa- stuff That's why it's a cop out, because time. I want to meet him as a rock star, too, <laughs> yeah, you know? Yeah, yeah. Uh, cool just pick his brain about, you know, yeah. different stuff. But in terms of someone who's, like, from horror, only does the horror thing... Mm. Either, either one of them, or, uh... The guy that played Freddy originally would be cool. Yeah. Or the guy that plays Jason... And, like, all, like originally did uh, most of the Jason, the guy that's most famous for it. Mm. I think he was there last year, too. I'm trying to think. It seems like I, I watched a documentary or something on on the what it's what it's like to to be in a main role of, you, are you know, talking, like yeah, a slasher you talking, movie or whatever. Are you talking, like, main roles or, like, directors or people? It's more, well, yeah. I mean, I, I, was, I guess I was kind of thinking more so, like, like actors. Okay. But no, that helps. Directors and stuff too would be cool. Because the actors got to get dressed up. Yeah. Jamie Lee Curtis, I think, yeah. would be a good one because she, like, her role is, it, 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 you know, you go back and watch it now and you think, oh yeah, I've seen this a million times. Well, that was like she was the one that kind of invented that, mm. and that was, you know, iconic, you know. Um, so she'd be great. Uh, Sigourney What's- Weaver. Uh, would be a great one. Like, what was it like acting on set with that fucking alien before anybody in the world <laughs> ever saw it? I bet that was... Because that was a guy in a suit no. a lot back then. Uh, the guy in that suit, I'd like to interview <laughs> him, the first one that ever played alien. That's what I mean, like, you know... Who was the guy in the suit? Yeah. yeah. You know? Nobody knows that shit either. <laughs> Maybe that's another segment we'll do. We'll do a series of episodes on those. Probably be a lot shorter because I can think of endless albums that we can go into. Like, yeah. we can do that. We, we will do that for days and days and days. <laughs> but that's another good one. Who was in the Predator costume? Mm. The, a, a deep, deep rabbit hole you could go down with that is all the people in the Godzilla costumes. And I've, I've had, there yes, are yeah. actually documentaries that exist about that, I think. I think I remember seeing one when I was younger. Wes Craven? Yeah. Be a good one. I was thinking, uh, but he's not an actor. No, he's yeah. That's still the same though. Like he's you know. If we're bringing them in though, then I would have to stay Stephen King as well because I actually just finished a Stephen King show. I just finished watching one on Hulu. It was fucking really good. Which which one was that? It was called uh, Eleven Twenty Three Sixty Three. It's about is that JFK? Is that guy uh, James Franco? Uh, who's who's the other guy? James Franco's pretty much the only one. I oh, think. Oh, is it? Yeah. I know I've seen that come across it's, there. Uh, yeah, it's a Stephen King. It's uh, well, did you watch The Punisher yet? Yeah. You remember the kid that blows himself up in that? He plays Lee Harvey Oswald. Oh. In this show. Okay. And yeah, it's about it's about a guy, a uh, English teacher, who goes to this diner and he's like personal friends with the guy that owns the diner. In the back of the diner, there's a closet, and when you walk into the closet, you literally literally fall out into October 22nd, 1960. It's just a wormhole. Hmm. Yeah, the plot of the show is that he, James Franco, has to go back and try to figure out if Lee Harvey Oswald was working alone to assassinate President Kennedy or if he was part of a bigger conspiracy and there, and then save Kennedy once he figures that out. And it's an eight-part miniseries. That does sound pretty cool. It was very, very good. It's old. Mm. Uh, it came out a couple years ago. I didn't get a chance to watch it until now because I didn't have Hulu. But James Franco knocks it out of the fucking park. I usually like a lot of the stuff he's in. I've never seen anything he's in that I didn't like. I want to see the disaster artist, yeah. and I think he should play the Joker. <laughs> oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Damn. I think he's the one. His face is a little too round, but I can get past it. Yeah. I think he should play that the Joker. That would be cool. Because there were some parts in in the show that I just watched that like just some of his movements and like there was one part where like he like almost got caught by like some secret service guys and he kind of like had to like pretend that he was just like a crazed crazy Kennedy fan in that scene I was like that's the Joker like a little <laughs> bit like I saw it seeping out a little bit and then like when he kind of like shuffles off quickly to leave the room it reminded me of the first scene with the second scene with the joker where he uh t- sits there with the gangsters mm. like just the way he shuffles out of the room mm. uh yeah I, I i think uh he'd be a great joker uh, he's got the face for it too the smiles and all the wrinkles when he smiles <laughs> it'd be perfect 
And I think he could come up with a voice pretty easily. I love, yeah. I think yeah, yeah. But he was really great in this. And I think he should have, uh, it was, yeah, it was great. It's a time travel thing. And it's not, I, I really like time travel things that don't involve time machines <laughs> except for Doctor Who. Yeah. It's the only time machine that I like. All the other ones I prefer it to be some sort of the jacket, a jacket situation, a midnight in Paris situation where he's just sitting in the right spot at midnight and then gets into a car. Or this, there's just a wormhole in the back of the closet. Yeah, it's a like a na- well, you don't <laughs> not have really to, a natural progression of you, things. But you don't like have it, to waste time on building a time machine. Yeah, you just it's just but I don't know, it's it, just a weird na- it's a weird thing in nature. You <laughs> kind of hit on something there. Yeah. It, it's it's just something that appeared in nature, and for all we know, these things could exist. It's mm. they are theor- they are theoretically possible according to theoretical physics. Yeah. So uh, plus, like, uh, like seems kind of old school. Mm-hmm. Like the like building a machine that takes you somewhere, and then there's that crazy sequence where yeah. it's like, you know what I mean? Agreed. Doctor it, Who does it a lot, but but it, I mean, it makes sense for that. Though. And and like when yeah, when Doctor Who ah uh, shit, am I wrong about this? No, I'm not wrong about this. When Doctor Who started, like the we never like even back in the '60s, we never see a TARDIS get built. Mm. He stole the TARDIS from his homeland of Gallifrey, or his home planet of Gallifrey, and left with it. Mm. So we never have to waste oh, okay. time there either, yeah. you know? So I haven't really seen I've seen enough of it to know what it's about, but I haven't, like, watched it from the beginning. Well, so. I know. I haven't watched it. I, that's why I had to stop myself <laughs> yeah. for a second, because I had to double. But I remember in the, uh, in one of the big ones, like, one of the ones they released in theaters, like, uh, the 50th anniversary special. Special, yeah, I think it was the 50th anniversary special where they actually the first uh, scene went back to that scene where it showed the original Doctor in black and white stealing his TARDIS. That was kind of cool. Yeah, so I had to double check that, but yeah, the, I I like I like the time travel stuff that is more just kind of it just kind of happens. Yeah. We don't because because any science you put on that is going to be wrong. So why <laughs> why even bother? Why not just have it be yeah. something that's there? A doorway you can walk through. Mm. It was really good. If you get a chance to watch it, you should check it out. Definitely definitely good. That was pretty interesting. Yeah. We're watching that and all these heavy metal documentaries. <laughs> it's a good mix. <laughs> right? Good blend there. Some time travel <laughs> shit. I like it. And, you know, it's... Uh, me and Jordan... Did an episode. One of the last episodes was a time travel episode, and I've been thinking a lot about it since then. And it's just like the endless. It's just endless paradoxes. Like <laughs> the second you go back, even if, even if the butterfly effect isn't that crazy. Like even if you step on a blade of grass, nothing's nothing's gonna happen. You're fine. Mm. But almost anything else that you do, any interaction you have with another human instantly causes a paradox almost like Mm -hmm. but here's the issue here's the thing jordan made this point almost any time for any reason almost as soon as like if you ever go back in time to change something if you change it it eliminates the reason why you went back in time so then did you ever go back in time to change it because there was no reason to because it would have already. Because it never happened. You are you went back and see it creates the loop paradox. Any little thing that you go back to. So if I were to go back in time right now and tell myself not to go to prom and go to the Arch Enemy concert, I would have never gone back in time to tell myself that because I went to the Arch Enemy concert. <laughs> or there was already there was already a, a timeline where you did that. Exactly. Yeah. Maybe it creates alternate timelines. Yeah. yeah. And that is something that. Dude, I like that. I think about a lot. I've been so like there. There have been times where like, like serious shits happen where like I or like like big like near misses like in traffic or whatever. Like I was just being, gonna like, say something. It like somewhere. It's weird that you said that. Some, <laughs> some somewhere. Who fuck knows? Like it, like okay. that actually happened okay. and like. Okay, because one of the current it totally reasonable 
theories in theoretical physics is the multiverse, all right? Mm. And if there's just a million different universes piled on top of each other, and every single second is the potential to create another universe with every choice that we make. If that, and it's, keep in mind, there's literal science that can actually, like, support some of these theories, Mm. all right? There's one time that I think about on a regular basis, all right? Because I'm so, like, intense about driving, like, I've like never been in a serious wreck and i credit that to not to, i credit that to uh being constantly vigilant like i'm never fucking around on the road you know what i mean i recognize the responsibility of operating a multi-ton vehicle hurling it even 25 miles an hour is going to wipe you out you know what i'm saying no i recognize that and i'm you know as a result I fucking take driving seriously and lose my fucking mind when I see people being goddamn irresponsible idiots out there. Mm. Fucking. So, as you drive, you know, I remember one time, um, I was driving, me and my whole family, back from Detroit. We were visiting my grandma down in Detroit. And I wanted to drive because mom is terrifying to drive with, and dad is, he's the kind of driver that, while he's driving in his head, I'm the only one on the road. <laughs> like, that's what is going on in his head. He's not paying attention to anybody else. He's not paying attention to his speed, which usually means he's driving like 10 to 15 miles under the speed limit, which sometimes causes... Tra- I've seen it cause a traffic hazard, Dad. I've seen it happen, <laughs> all right? Like, it happens, all right? You got to pay more attention to other people on the road. When I'm driving, I'm aware of every car and its color mm. around me. You know what I mean? It must be um, a dad thing. My yeah. Dad does that what same shit too. <laughs> so one time I, I was, I was like, I'm fucking driving home because I'm not dealing with either of you behind the wheel. I'm going to be less stressed out if I just get to drive home. <laughs> so we got home. We're at like the light right uh, near Coolidge and uh, at Coolidge and Saginaw. All right. And I, it's dark, clear, perfectly fine. You know, nothing crazy. And I can see, we have a red light, but I can see it's about to flip because I can see the orange light reflection on the other side. Mm. And I was like late for something. So I didn't slow down. So to everybody else in the car, it looks like I'm about to run a red light and then switches and I go and I'm good. Mm. But I have like regularly went, because that's one of the lights I have to get go through to get home usually. So I'm there often. And I regularly think about in another timeline, just one car was trying to run the orange light. Is all it would have taken. And the whole car is wrecked. Everybody in the family is dead. Mm. Whoever's in that car is dead. 45 mile an hour accident. (laughs) T-bone. Like, I think about that constantly. And I'm like, in another reality, like, if if the multiverse thing is real, if every second is a new decision, that means, like, right now, a millisecond ahead of us is another us saying the same thing. So that means every possibility that things that could have happened existed. That means... That they that I did get into an accident that day mm. in another reality. Mm. You know what I mean? It did happen, mm. and that's kind of how it fe- it genuinely feels that it's, way. Like yeah. when I think about it, it actually feels like it did happen sometimes. Because I think that when you get to those close call moments, like if if the theory is real, mm. maybe we can feel something that leaked over. You know what I mean? Maybe some of the energy from the impact of that moment that didn't happen on this timeline mm. leaked over. I don't know, like. But sometimes when I look back at stuff, instances like that, I can literally almost like feel as if it had happened. Oh, man. And it trips me the fuck out. But yeah, no, it's fucking, that shit trips me out a lot. I think about that. And it's it's hard not to sometimes. So like, and it's usually it's with like big traumatic yeah, type shit. Like, like it's it, never small it, stuff. Yeah, it's like when, <laughs> you know, a sec, you know, one second difference and I'd be dead right now mm-hmm. kind of stuff. It's also kind of weird how that kind of shit seems to happen <laughs> relatively often. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it's not good. I've well, I've had you know situations like that and things like that happen all the time, and it still will do it. Like it'll it'll mess with you a lot. Like I've <laughs> I've had to like it's it's always it's always um, that idea, and then like I think it, I think it kind of goes in line with uh, you know like your own mortality yeah. and stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah. Like Cause things like, like different, different dimensions and things like that. Like kind of what we were just talking about and, um, extra, extra, not, not like aliens or anything like that, but extra like, dimensional. Beings. Yeah, yeah. Like different dimensions and stuff yeah. like that. I don't know. Like, I just kind of thought of a problem with it though. Cause wouldn't that theory, wouldn't it also hold true then 
that like every second we are having heart attacks and strokes and brain aneurysms. Because if every second that's a possibility, I, then in yeah. a different reality that's happening right now, I f- yeah. every second we live in a different reality, we die. I've thought about that. And I never feel anything like that, so maybe, I don't, yeah. I don't know. It's so fucking crazy, though. <laughs> maybe maybe you've already died in another dimension. Well, that that would be the case, yeah. yeah. If, if, if every reality is a possibility. No. Yeah. If every reality exists. And we've died a million times in every day. <laughs> yeah. Since birth, we've been dying. <laughs> There's um, one reality where we died at birth, another one where we died an hour later, another one died a day later, another yeah. one where we died two days later. Like, <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> this is my mind up right now. <laughs> God, this is this is the, the totally possible. The deep contemplation moment of the program. <laughs> <laughs> Because I was thinking about that same thing just a second ago, too. Oh, man. Wow. God, I'd love to find a wormhole, though. I did decide after watching that show, because, okay, so Kennedy gets assassinated in 63, and every time you walk through the wormhole, it always takes you back to exactly, like, 1 p.m. on October 22nd, 1960. Mm. So if you want to stop Kennedy from being assassinated, you have to stay in the past for three years. But no matter how long you stay in in this show, the 63 show, no matter how long you stay in the past, only two minutes can pass in the present. But but you still age. You're still aging normally. So if you went back in time for 10 years and came back through, yeah, only two minutes has passed, but you're 10 years physically older. Fuck, what was I about to say with that? Oh, yeah, no, I decided (laughs) that I cannot do that. I cannot live in the 60s, at least. I'd never be able to do it. Dude, I was watching that show. I was like... All right, y'all, cut. Like, no, I'd, I'd never, I could, you don't go to a hospital. Don't think about going to a fucking hospital in 1960. Don't get on a plane. Don't get on, I would not get a, fly a plane in 1960. <laughs> all right? Like, yeah. I barely trust that shit today. Like, <laughs> shit disappears. Yeah. One disappeared in 2015. Yeah, all right? That was recent. Still hasn't been found. <laughs> a fully loaded filled with passengers plane vanished off the face of the earth and no one's found it still it's still like two or three years ago yeah. so yeah sorry if i don't trust fucking i'm not the first one to jump at trusting planes especially in 1960 jesus christ yeah. before we even went to the moon <laughs> yeah yeah and the music Oh, God, the music we're all like i wouldn't be able to live in a time before overdrive electric guitars and all like the, your whole world is just like the Beatles like, at a certain point and yeah. I can't live in that <laughs> I can't live in that I was thinking though I was like well one thing I could do because I remember like you'd have to get deep with it but I remember when I was like around 11 10 11 12 somewhere in there I had my I had a cat named Tigger, and she was like half an outdoor cat, half indoor. She mm. spent most of her time inside, but we let her out because she'd come back and be fine. Well, she killed a baby rabbit one time, and we buried it in the backyard. All right, so what if I went back to 1960, went to that spot where I know I'm going to bury the rabbit in 2010, and bury something there that I'll find, like instructions on how to start Facebook <laughs> or something like that or who's gonna win all the super bowls okay. you know stuff like that yeah. and just leave it for myself and also start a bank account a savings account in my name and let the interest grow <laughs> just, i would do those two things jump back and be good <laughs> i'd i'd go back and uh create uh what we now know is bitcoin Yep, that would be good. That'd be a good. <laughs> and one. then I would just yeah. just write instructions <laughs> to yourself where you know you're gonna dig for some reason. Because we were kids, <laughs> we were kids, we were kids in the '90s. We still dug in dirt. That's kind of like yeah. I I remember there was like a part in my parents' backyard that like was like a mound of like uh like wood chips and dirt filled with like trees and bushes that like kind of separated the houses behind it. Mm. So I would fucking run around in there and dig shit up all the fucking time. <laughs> I always kind of like the concept of time capsules. Time capsule. Like I, I know it's like a dumb like, like yeah. What happens when you dig up a time, whatever, dude? But what, like, but what happens when you dig one up and it's marked twenty twenty four? That's that's what I'm it's saying. It's marked from the future. Yeah. Like whoa! What do we got here? What <laughs> yeah. do we got here? Like, 
you know, and that's the thing is it's like today, if someone were to fall through a wormhole that linked up to 2048, not a soul on this earth would believe them. Oh, because nobody from this era would be. So for all we know, it's not only happened, but been happening. Yeah. Do you know, me and, <laughs> me and Jordan talked a little bit about this last time. You know what the Mandela effect is, right? We've talked about this. Um, probably, yeah, but refresh it's, me on it. It's a thing, it gets its name because, like, for some reason, there's a large, like, a giant percentage of the population that was surprised when Nelson Mandela died in, like, the early 2000s because they all thought he died in prison in the 80s when he was imprisoned. Uh, they were certain of it, like... Mm. No, that guy died in prison when he was in prison. And as it turns out, no, he's been alive this whole time. But um, better examples, the one that personally fucks me up the most is uh, what, um, uh, I think I've done this to you before. What is a, a TV show from the early 2000s about, it's it's got like four or five women in it. Um, and they're, uh, they live in New York. What was that show called? Biggest show. Come on. You know it. What what year are we talking about? Like early 2000s. Like right around Friends, you know. They all lived in New York in the city. Mm -hmm. Oh. (laughs) What was that show called? Sex in the City. Yes. Yes. Okay. Sex in the City. Right? Yeah. Right. No. It's never been called that. (laughs) What? It's called Sex and the City. Okay. No, it's not though. No, see, that's the issue is that it's never been called Sex and the City. I remember when that show was brand fucking new. I remember watching Seinfeld reruns and seeing commercials for that show. I remember seeing the logo and the word in, not and. It's Mm. Sex in the City. Go watch any TV show. Go watch episodes of Joe Rogan. Pay attention to this from now on. Anytime you ever hear anyone reference that show, they will call it Sex in the City. Mm. It's never been called Sex and the City. But you oh. Google search it, that's the only thing you find. Go to Disc Traders, see the old DVD box sets, mm. Sex and the City. Yet I've seen YouTube videos of a guy who noticed this and found a bag of his girlfriend's like old shit mm. uh, full of Sex in the City metro- memorabilia. Mm. Labeled, printed, stamped, whole nine. Well, didn't it, didn't it used to be on like HBO or something? Uh, no, it was on, like, TBS. Oh, really? Yeah, I don't think it started on HBO. Huh. My thinking was maybe, like, once the movie came out, it they, they had the movie called Sex and the City? Nope. Nope. What? Because the box sets at Disc Traders, at the old DVD store, still say Sex and the City. Yeah, it's fucking your mind up right now, isn't it? That's the Mandela effect. That's the Mandela... Okay, here's it's, another one. It's Here's another one. The song, um... By Queen, we are the champions. Yeah. We are the champions. How does the song end? Is that, we, you, this is the end of the song. <laughs> last line. We are the champions no, of the world. Of the world. Yeah. That song. That line is not in that song. Never has been. Apparently. What? Yep. No. Dead you're, serious. You're lying. It's never been you're, in that song. What are you er, t- I'm dead serious, dude. <laughs> According to every piece of information that I can find, that line doesn't exist and was just apparently made up by all of us fans. But you've heard no. it. You've literally <laughs> heard that line before, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. So have every I, bro. time I've heard that song. So have I. <laughs> That's the Mandela effect. So it's not there, but it's. But everybody remembers it being there. Now there are actually psychological. There's psychological terminology that can explain some of these things. Like, uh, for example, um, th- one of the examples is uh, the line from Silence of the Lambs, Hello, Clarice. Mm. Well, apparently that line is never said in the movie. Also, uh, Luke, I am your father. Mm. He never says Luke. It's just, I am your father. Right. So there, there are little things like that. Those two examples are often cited by people who talk about the Mandela effect. I think those are better examples of what, of this psychological misremembering thing that can happen. But a gigantic percentage of the population remembering Nelson, Nelson Mandela dying and things like our examples here of sex in the city and the queen song. Those don't make sense to me. Yeah, no, I can't, I can't. I don't know what that is. I don't know what's going on. I don't have any theories, but I know something's going on. I also don't think it's any kind of conspiracy. I don't think anybody's like covering anything up or anything like that. But here's my thought. 
That Berenstein Bears is another one. It's Berenstein Bears, apparently. It's always been that. What the fuck? What the <laughs> fuck? Your all reality is like, coming apart right now, dude, isn't like, it? I, my, I've just been... It's all just been a lie. I don't no, <laughs> no, see, it's not a lie. It's not a lie, dude. What if somebody did come back in time? Maybe, I don't know, they saved Nelson Mandela from dying in prison. And it had a butterfly effect of all these other things. I don't know wh- how to explain why some people can still remember the original timeline, but maybe that's how this works. We don't know how it works. Oh, yeah, that was the other one I was thinking. Kazam? People Kazam. were saying that doesn't exist. Yeah. But it's a thing, but, like, yeah, they don't know the title or what happened to the movie's existence, but they're all very certain that it was Once Upon a Time a thing. Yeah. But they're saying that it's not... I remember that movie. I'm <laughs> I, yeah. pretty sure I saw Shazam. Yeah. I remember the cover. I remember the, <laughs> him dressed up. What? Yeah. <laughs> God. Yeah, no, it fucks me up, dude. I don't know what's going on here, but uh, that, I think that... I mean, how do you? how else would you explain that? There's like some psychological explanation terminology for there 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 are examples of people of 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 massive amounts of people misremembering information Mm. however i'm not buying it on some of these ones to that scale to that scale of the world now i did think of something when i was talking with jordan about the queen song i was like i wonder if they added it in in mighty ducks 3 because that's where a lot of people from my generation probably know that song from Mm. And I feel like that's where I remember hearing it there. So maybe there's something going on there. I haven't watched Money Ducks 3 since, D3 since then. Mm-hmm. I came up with that theory, but I guess there's a possibility there. But specifically, you know, in, but if it's not, if the, if I watch that movie and that line is never in that movie, mm. then I'm going to lose, throw shit. <laughs> I'm just going to start throwing things. Yeah. Like, <laughs> what? I, I, I don't know what's going on here. I don't, I don't know how to explain what's happening. I don't think that it's as simple as like a mass misremembering mm. psychological thing. I think there's something else. I also don't think it's any, has anything to do with the government. I don't think it's any kind yeah. of government cover up <laughs> at all. Cause, Cause why? why? Yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's sex and the city. Yeah. And it no. always has no. been. Like, well, what does that matter? No. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh yeah no I don't know what's going on, but I you know how did we get how did we get here one place it could be from is a time traveler oh, yeah that's right okay fucking with stuff could be yeah at least it's certainly fun for my brain to think about <laughs> <it> like that <laughs> yeah that is very true God that <laughs> like I'm telling you it's like that when I found out the sex and the city thing sex in the city uh. To me, that's equivalent, because I was watching the shows at the same time. That's equivalent to someone coming up to me tomorrow and going, no, it's called Steinfeld, not Seinfeld. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's like, no, it's fuck what? Yeah. Like, <laughs> it doesn't make sense. It's, it's that it is, because that show was iconic. Like, that was the first show that ever existed with the word sex in the fucking title. Maybe it was on HBO originally. I feel like it. Let's find out. At one point, it was a lot more, like, extreme, too. Not like, I don't know. I never really watched it, so I, I don't really know. But it's, I feel like I heard something about it a while ago that, that was kind of... Let's find out. Because when you search sex in the city, I'm going to do it right now. That's what it brings up. It'll be sex and the yeah. city just magically, but that is not the case. Oh, produced by HBO. Yeah. I thought it was... I mean, they must have replayed it on normal TV because I fucking definitely saw commercials for it. Oh, boy. I think I've uncovered something here. Let's say Doctor Who, for example. Go to their Wikipedia page. Okay. Something strange is going on here. Maybe, yeah, okay, so not exactly. But apparently, the television show Sex in the City was based on part, based in part on writer Candace Bushnell. Bushnell. Her 1997 book of the same name. So that, 1997, her 1997 book. So that means she was writing that book, probably had the title from probably starting around 95 or 96 at some point. That means... Okay, so the show started two years after that. If 
if this was caused by some kind of a time travel, time anomaly, then it would have had to have been before that. They would have had to have gone back to the early 90s at least. Mm -hmm. Which lines up perfectly for Nelson Mandela and saving him, causing ripple effect. Doesn't, it does not... (laughs) It does not add up for the Berenstein reach, Bears. It does yeah. not add up for the Berenstein Bears. Yeah. Berenstein Bears have been around since the 40s. But maybe someone went back in time and tried to kill Hitler. <laughs> 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 Fucked up. <I'm laughs> or they did kill Hitler and found out that the future was even worse somehow. Could be, yeah. But what would that, like... But in, in, in any of those <laughs> cases, it causes too many paradoxes. That's, that's the thing, like... <sighs> But what is a paradox? A paradox is just a word. We, we, we don't, we don't, as human beings, we don't have an understanding of the nature of time. All we can do is sort of measure it here on Earth. But we know that even as soon as we leave Earth, time is different. Mm-hmm. So all we have any sort of grasp on is an agreed upon measurement system of Earth time. That's all we have. That's true. We do not understand t- the nature of time outside of that. Hardly at all. Right. So. But. Because that. Wouldn't that mean that. Like this. The, the time travel event would have had to have been like. Kind of calculated. Like they, they would have. You would have known like what. Like. I don't know. Maybe not. Well, I mean, if I walked into a closet and fell into a different time, but I guess turned around wouldn't. and walked back in and realized I could just go back and forth like that. Yeah. 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 That's one scenario, at least. That's true. Yeah. Cause you, yeah. But would there be, would there be a way to, well, I guess not other than with like, like a, something to do it with or whatever, but like you couldn't, and it's kind of getting like sci-fi with it, but you couldn't like pick your, I mean, I guess this whole thing <laughs> really is, but yeah. like, you know, I, like I, it, I guess there isn't really anything that you could do to, like, figure out what time period you wanted to go to and stuff, or, like, you know what I mean? Not without a machine. Yeah. As, yeah. <clears throat> and if we were to go back in something like the 60s, I mean, I, the only the one I'd want to go back to is obviously the 80s, and I don't want to live 20 years <laughs> before that, you know? Yeah. It's kind of a, not, not as fun sounding. <laughs> I always think about what it would be like to go back and, like, show, uh, man, like, I, I guess, I guess a better way to set this up is, like, have you ever, you ever been, like, doing, like, I don't know, like, all right, so, so let's say, like, music, for example, if you took now and then took it to, like, I don't know, like, Beethoven or somebody and showed them, like, this is what's happening now, like, and then went back, like, you ever think, like, how far ahead things would be? Maybe? Maybe not. I don't know. But, but, <laughs> but see, that's, ah, man, see, that's so difficult, because what do we mean by that? Like, fu- in terms of music, well, you know, not, not necessarily just that, but, like, anything with that, you know, like, you know, go, let's say, like, you know, directors or something, like, Show like a movie or whatever, and be like, you know, back back like you know, original black and white movies and stuff, and then be like, oh, check this out, fucking like, I don't know, I don't know, like Godzilla or something, yeah, or like Predator or something. Well, they like, probably you know, have a heart attack. Probably they probably wouldn't believe that it's they, even... if you if you showed someone Predator. As soon as that thing took off its mask, they would stroke the fuck yeah. out. Are you kidding me? People <laughs> had like a heart attacks during Nosferatu and shit. Like that's true. Yeah, they cannot. They, those brains were not ready. <laughs> you need the slow build. Yeah, show them Godzilla. Tell them it's a documentary. Fuck their <laughs> shit right up. That would be that would be something. I'm from the future. I yeah. need to show this to you. This is what's going to happen. Yeah. You need to prevent it. And then you just created a crazy person. God, no. Yeah, that's this is not. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody should give us access to time travel. <laughs> I guess that's the moral of this. <laughs> Except, but not like you know what I'm saying though. Like, yeah, yes. If you were to like, but in in terms of music in particular. When you say for how much farther we'd be, what does that even mean? 
Okay, so I uh, so let's let's talk in terms of like so so now versus like you know Jimi Hendrix like that era, right? Whatever. But if you were not not necessarily so much like the the sound of what's going on, but like what all is happening with that right now, like all the advancements and stuff. You went back and like what advancements though? Like just in the in how it's all done. Oh. As far as like you know, and like what's what the sound is now based on what it was back then, you know, like if if they had access to it and were to hear like I don't know, like Mashuga or something, and it was like you know, if if you were is like, I, I don't I like I'd be interested first of all to hear the response from Jimi Hendrix about Mashuga yeah. or a band like that, but like no. also what they would do with that and how that would change the. Well, what if you, you know, could, yeah, and just like show it to him for a second? Yeah, here's an idea for you. It's the it's uh, it's kind of you a, got, I mean, you know though, you know though that like somebody, one of them, like probably the guys in Deep Purple or something like that, are like. Whoever was the early, so the early, god damn it. Ooh, I can't stop yawning. Pass it on to you, I'm sorry. Uh, <laughs> it's all my fault. The, uh, <laughs> you know, some of those early artists that, like, wanted to be the most intense. Mm. And so if you show someone from Deep Purple some Lamb of God, right? maybe they kick it up a little bit earlier. That's what but I at mean. the same time, though, like, I almost wouldn't want to fuck with the history of that. Because, like, if it doesn't happen exactly the way it did, I mean, we might not be in as at, as good of a place. We might be in a shittier spot now, you know? If fucking... If heavy metal became the biggest music genre in the world in the 70s instead of 80s, do we ever get Metallica? Or does things stay closer to, like, Iron Maiden and, 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 and Rainbow and early Iron Maiden, like, first two albums? Yeah. Iron Maiden? Oh, that's, uh, that's a good point. Cause you would have. Where does thrash come from? You would have. Yeah, because you would have. Well, if it already happened, sort of, but not by those artists, and not with the same technology. <laughs> would it would it even exist when you went back to show? Like, how would you how would you have access to that? Because you couldn't. I wouldn't. Yeah, think you can't play it on a CD player. Yeah, you have like, to have it on a phone. And even then, like, there's no like you couldn't really. I mean, I guess if you like, if it's on it, yeah. if you don't need internet, like That's iTunes, yeah. if you just have iTunes, it <laughs> should work. If it's downloaded onto the phone, but yeah, like, what would that do to? Because that would have meant that, yeah, because everything that was influential would have already existed at that point. You wouldn't be able to leave anything either. Yeah, like it's like it's like uh, you know, like today George Lucas went back in time and gave himself the original script to Star Wars. Then who wrote the script? Kind of a thing. Huh. <laughs> that's yeah kind of the same thing as kind yeah. of what I was talking about yeah it's the same sort of thing yeah I don't know it's a loop it is it can't have come from nowhere but it didn't come from anywhere <laughs> god well we did we did circle back and onto uh, you know metal and stuff so that's kind of a weird <laughs> chain of events there <laughs> <laughs> in a way on this one but yeah you know or, well guess no. <laughs> or like yeah, okay so so think about this so if you if you went back to to like like when when kill em all was out yeah and you were you know you you went to uh so like you, yeah, so so you went to them and you were like yeah so all this well because no because that would mess with the timeline too because then that so thinking like because if if you went back when that was out and then you showed them like like one of their more recent ones it's like this is what you're gonna like yeah you it, can't do that it wouldn't exist well because yeah because then that would you can't do that because then uh, that's then who wrote effect, it yeah because yeah. you wouldn't yeah that would mean yeah yeah that's yeah. That means the first time they ever heard it was off of your phone. Yeah. And they had to write it to get it on your phone, but they're hearing it before they wrote it, so now... <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, yeah, Just immediately, exactly. immediately unravels. <laughs> but, the, again, like, we don't understand time as a natural construct, so maybe, like, you can go back and do that, and it has, like, no effect. Maybe time doesn't care, you know what I mean? Like... Mm. 
Or maybe, like, in the show, time pushes back against you. Like, there's a scene where he tries to call his dad on a payphone, and, like, it's all, she won't let him talk to him. Mm. And then he walks out of the payphone and stops for a second, and he's going to turn around to go back to try again, and a car smashes into the payphone. Time tries to stop you from fucking with it. There are, yeah. That could, yeah. And since time, what we do understand of time is that it is a force, kind of, like, like gravity, sort of. Uh, like, as in terms of how it works in the universe, as far as we know, gravity pushes back against, you know what I mean? It's how it works, so no. maybe time would, too. If if you went back in, in, to to the exact point where uh, Cliff Burton died, stop, stop that, that from, from happening? Yeah. You think that... Metallica would have mm-hmm. stayed good? Yeah. Probably. <laughs> Probably. Or... Or yeah, the, Hanneman? the opposite. Hanneman? That, yeah. Jeff Hanneman? Yeah. But, I mean, let's let's be honest, Slayer was probably five or six years from retiring, even if he had survived. Dio. Yeah, that, I would save Dio. <laughs> yeah. I would save Dio. That's the one I would save, just to see him again. Mm-hmm. Oh, Dio. Somehow, we don't have to go back and save Ozzy yet. <laughs> what the fuck? We have to listen yeah. to the Osborne podcast. It's like, Jesus Christ, man. <laughs> That is, I've, I've been listening a little bit of it's that. It's great. Yeah. It's really good. Gives a different, like, dynamic to yeah. what I thought that. Totally different perspective. Uh, uh, and, uh, you know. Plus the one, the, sorry, the last one that they did uh, with uh, the photographer guy. That They've had one or two more since then, but yeah. Oh, okay, yeah. See, I, like. That was really good. Yeah. And, like, it, <clears throat> so I, I looked up who it was and everything and started looking through everything, you know, kind of, like, what he's done and stuff and, like. Anybody who's anybody, really. He's taking and, like, pictures iconic of. Iconic stuff that I've seen, you know, thousands of times. It's like. Yeah, he's got Rolling Stone covers. Yeah. Like, yeah, he, he's one of the biggest, like, m- music fo- photographers probably yeah. ever. He said he, on that episode, too, he said that they want to do uh, an Ozzy, like, photo documentary kind of sort of thing. Which be, could be, cool. be pretty cool. Yeah. yeah. I do, I haven't yet, and I still really want to see the Jack and Ozzy show that's that's really good i like that show i'm meaning to watch it i don't know how i don't know what channel it's on or anything um or if any of the streamers have it so i think it was on like a and e or something i wonder if it's on hulu could be i haven't, I haven't tried for it, it. Yeah. it's a good show though yeah i would definitely yeah i'd probably uh well no well there's a bunch i would save to get to see bon scott mm-hmm but then Black and Black never happens. You save Bon Scott, Black and Black never happens. But then what does? That's that's a question. <laughs> that's the question. Man, that album is so fucking good, Black and Black. Yeah. Like, unheard of. Unheard of. To date. To date. I cannot think of any other band who lost their lead singer coming off of their best album ever with that lead singer, and then the next album they drop with a new lead singer is right there in comparison. Yeah. Yeah, that's what Iconic. Yeah. yeah, I don't. I can't really think of any that. That's because they went back to back, Highway to Hell, Back in Black. Like holy shit! <laughs> yeah, <laughs> like, <laughs> monsters, monsters. Might have been because most of the same band members were in it. Everybody so else, like, yeah, yeah, it's the same. Yeah. yeah, but still, the singer is mm. the voice of the band. Like if you don't, I always, I always kind of favored the Bon Scott era of ACDC more than. You know, most people do, and I'm not saying I don't, I just have a hard time picking one. Yeah. Because it's like, I'll, I'll, I'll probably say that, I've probably said that many times, but as soon as you turn on, you shook me all night long, it's over. Like, it's over. <laughs> Rock and roll ain't noise pollution? Oh my god, dude, I listened to that song on the bus coming home a <laughs> million times. Like, especially how it starts, you hear him lighting a cigarette and shit, like, yeah. ain't got no rhythm, man. Oh god. Dude, uh, long way to the top. That song. Yeah. Not, That's not, Bon Scott. Or, yeah, Bon Scott. Yeah. Not only was it in probably one of my favorite movies, regardless <laughs> of what anybody has to say, School of Rock. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but. Mr. Well, Schneble. Yeah. Um. Great film. Oh, dude. Oh, I love it. I, like, I've seen it so many times, and every time it's funny to me. It's so I don't, I don't get it. And it's so, like, it, like there's there's always, 
I feel like I reference it at least once a week. Oh, dude, in yeah. so in some way, like even if it's small, like you know, the way he says some things in that movie, yeah. I still say it to this day. <laughs> like, God, yeah. Well, he's talking about getting kicked out of the band or whatever. Mm-hmm. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna start my own band, and then you're all gonna be a funny little footnote on my, on my epic, epic ass. ass. <laughs> 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 oh my god, there's so much gold in that movie, dude. Or when he's talking to the, the little Asian kid, the, little, the keyboard player. Yeah. He's like, oh, I'm not cool enough for whatever. He's like, man, <laughs> like, you, <laughs> keyboard player for this band. And he's like, you're the cool, you're like cat's pajamas. You're the bee's yeah. knees. <laughs> <laughs> hey, we're the most popular kid in school. He does like the little handshake with him and stuff. Yeah. Oh my <laughs> god, dude, it's so good. St- <laughs> we go on and on about quoting that movie probably what, what, all right, so what, the part no the what part was that, what was well, that well the part where he's doing the uh, the uh, immigrant song while he's driving yeah hammer <laughs> of the god I still make the hammer motion because I saw him do it every time down and now that song made me that movie made me get into the immigrant song I was like oh shit do 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 that oh yeah um no, that that song though, like that's just because I don't know. I found that kind of like the 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 older I get, and the more like into like you know doing the whole like weekend shows or like you know touring and stuff. Like mm-hmm. I don't know that that song just like it what captures song? everything. Uh, long way to the top. Oh yeah, yeah. It just like I don't know everything about it. Um, just like everything that he's talking about is like that's that's it. Yep. Like that's that's the perfect. Look out! It's roughing me. Yeah. yeah. God, I love that song. Oh, ACDC. ACDC is honestly like I don't talk about them much. Yeah. But they were. I, are they even on the family tree? I think maybe like early, like early metal. Yeah. I mean, I would like call I them early lot. metal. It is weird that they've never. I don't know. Maybe they have. I don't know. They've never really like gone in depth about them. See, that's such the that's such the gray area in talking about the early bands because a lot of them weren't trying to be metal. Had no the metal didn't really exist. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. but you can't tell me that fucking like that is the most metal fucking riff. Highway to hell. That the the whole song is metal as fuck. Are you kidding yeah. me? Angus, the, them on stage, yeah, they had every ounce of of metal, like whether whether you call them that. I don't know if they're on the fucking. It's, that's gonna bother me. Yeah, check that for me. <laughs> it seems like I've, I, because they they gotta be. No, yeah. they gotta be. But I don't know what category other than early metal, and they weren't in that episode of Metal Evolution. So, like I said, it's so weird to me that they've never like really talked about that. No, they don't really talk about AC fucking DC. Maybe they're maybe they're just considered the kings of hard rock. But they guns no, yeah, if guns is in there, A C D C is in there. I'm sorry. If poison's in there, A C D C is heavier than poison. Alright? For sure. If poison's glam rock, A C D C is definitely some kind of metal. Glam metal, I mean. Okay, so this is the as updated as into uh the metal so this is the metal evolution. Gotta be so one of the top the, branches. Yeah. What do we got? Early metal Kiss. Yeah, ZZ Top. They've got to be in here somewhere. Not progressive. It won't be in progressive. Mm-hmm. Def Leppard. I'm not seeing them, bro. Wow. Go up. Dude, I'm not seeing it. The who? British Heavy? No. Eight, okay. Hey, oh, wait, wait. I see them. British. New, new wave of British Heavy. New album? I guess, yeah. They were a new album? Because they were. They are, you know. <sighs> I don't know though. I don't necessarily know if I would put them as First part of, all, of the new wave of it. I would put them more in like the early metal UK. I just watched like the new album episode of Lock Horns, and they were not on the list. Never I don't talked believe. about them. They never were talked about, and they were very specific mm. in saying that new album is a reference to a very specific time period from like seventy nine, and then th- he literally said in the episode the book closes at eighty four. Anything that that is where new album is. It doesn't exist outside of that time period. So ACDC was long before that. Granted, their biggest albums, Highway to Hell and Back in Black, were right in that mix. But I, I, they, yeah, they they're had, too old. They're too old to be new album. It was the first was one. High Voltage was the first album. Yeah, that was 76. 
Well, okay. Well, no, it's, no, TNT was seventy five, but I don't know if that was. All right. Well, that was more of like a like a. That is that is more recent than I thought. I thought they got started closer to seventy. God damn, they released a lot of albums then. Seventy seven. From seventy five to seventy nine. So seventy five is TNT. Seventy six was high voltage. Uh, seventy seven was Let There Be Rock. They're releasing an album a year. Yeah. From there's, 75, there's, and then Back in Black was 80, which means Highway to Hell had to be 879. So there was a point in time where ACDC was coming out with a new album every year. That's just, that's a level of writing that is insane to me. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All you do with your time, six months on the road, six months in the studio. Might have explained why after a while, because, I mean, the like, the things that you talk about, when I mean, most people, when they talk about ACDC, is how, like, simplistic they were. Sure. As far as like, and that's that's sort of what I think of when, other than like, you know, just solid, just like straightforward rock songs, which I mean, I get like it's you know, I mean, I I don't, I get I it. I wouldn't discredit it at all. I, no, it, it's, it's, okay, two things about that. One, I get it, mm. but if I don't care how simple it is, if it <clears> makes you feel that way in your fucking bones, it's, then yeah. it does what it needs to be doing. It's, yeah, it's the songwriting. It doesn't it. need to be complicated to do that. Yeah. First of all. Second of all, I would argue that if anyone who has ever seen ACDC live should understand that it's not as easy as it sounds, especially the way they play live. I saw a fucking 70 some odd year, however the fuck old Angus Young is running full tilt back and forth, doing the sur- on-the-ground windmill thing while soloing. Like, on <laughs> stuff that guitar players today are not Don't doing. Do. Plain yeah. and simple. Don't do, have never done, you will you will never see. Do The only guitarist that does any kind of cool shit nowadays is Alexi fucking Leho. Like... Yeah. In terms of, there's like lead. In terms of what you're doing on stage, your stage activity, he flips it around his body every time. Mm. But no one else is running full tilt soloing like he is. Like <laughs> I tell you what, man, no one, no guitarist is doing that anymore that I've seen. Yeah. So from like, so seventy five. All right. So um, seventy five was high voltage. So they started first studio album was seventy five. Australia only, though. So that it counts? Yeah. Okay, so then... Uh, Maybe that's why we like Parkway so much. They get their riffs from ACDC. <laughs> <Could> be, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that would kind of make sense. Yeah, 76. Uh, yeah, and then that's that's what's crazy to me. The 79, 80 yeah. back-to-back, Highway to Hell. And they, then like, For Those About to Rock is next? Oh, wow. So those three albums in a row were powerhouses. Mm. But those two, yeah, Highway to Hell, Back in Black, 79, 80. That is... I think that's probably my favorite, one of my favorites. Dirty Deeds is a great yeah. one. Who did their album covers? Oh, there's another one I'm going to have to go down. <laughs> Son of a bitch. Yeah. Well, there's not a lot of artwork. A lot of them, it's just it's pictures of the band or Angus in a weird, you know. Yeah. <laughs> I'm looking for artwork. Like, the, I, and specifically, what I want is, uh, I want you to do, like, Black Dahlia. Um, I have, I, I was thinking, I was thinking, um... Like Behemoth too for yep. some reason. Demon would be good. Yeah. Uh Goat Horror would be good. Any of the real fucking crazy ones. Yeah. Because those those I feel like are where the the artist stories are gonna come from. Mm. Uh but I'm definitely gonna I probably probably not for a while, but I'll definitely go back down that rabbit hole of the guy that did Rush and White Snake and Oyster Cult and all the white and Megadeth and the million other ones. Definitely because he's I bet you that, you know, he has worked, that going down his rabbit hole will lead to others, is what I'm saying, trying yeah. to say. So, I'm definitely going to do that eventually, but for now, I think I just want to focus on our favorite bands. We'll start there, our favorite bands, our favorite album covers, and then kind of get into the, the deeper stuff that we find along the way. Okay. That's kind of the plan yeah. at the moment. I'd like to, yeah, I'd like to, <clears throat> like to do Lamb of God. Obviously, uh, Bodum be a huge one. Got to be a good one. I'm pretty sure I found stuff out about their artists before because I think the same guy's always done there. That'd be I. Li- that's what I like to find is when it's one guy, and I'd like to I'd like to find out their story. I wish I could find more on the Cannibal Corpse guy. But yeah, there. I mean, I'd like to know who does the art for Cannabis 
corpse because that shit is great. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's there's a lot, there's a lot that I'm just not that's not popping up right now in my head, but I th- I really think there's something here, and there definitely is because we've already found some cool ass shit. Yeah, a lot of stuff I didn't really know about. Yeah, no one is uh, compiling this information. It seems so. Why and not? in in it well you know in an era of like, I was listening to a metal and I think it was a metal injection podcast the other day, and they were basically saying the least lucrative thing a band can do is make an album yeah. to, in today's market. <laughs> so you know we're we're in an era era where potentially th- this all all this stuff has the potential to be dead in ten years. So I think that's why not. I don't think anybody's really ever you know. No, I don't think anybody's ever really questioned it. I didn't. I didn't go, it's, hmm, who's this artist that's been banned in every fucking country across the world <laughs> until like two days ago, last week or something. So, yeah. Dude, what I've, what I've always wanted to do is find like, like a really iconic, you know, artist or whatever and then have them, have them make up like a tattoo or something. Oh, that'd be awesome. And get like, but it would have to be, I wouldn't, I wouldn't want it to be something that they've done before. Like mm-hmm. I'd want it to be an original idea. And then just get, I, and like, cause at that point it would just be for one thing. A piece, someone's, be, yeah. an artist's work of art, literally. Yeah. I don't know, I always thought that would be, you know, That'd be insane. Cool. Yeah. Give that, give the Cannibal Corpse guy a full back. <laughs> you could do my whole back. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dude, I'd, I'd sit through that. <laughs> that would be worth it to me. Like, having just something, like, I don't know, just get, like, <laughs> There's so many different things you could do. Yeah, just get a big portrait of like alien on your back. Oh, that'd be cool. Like, <laughs> by yeah, by fucking Geiger or whatever his name is. He yeah, I I actually did a uh, it was like a class project or something. I one of the, some like art. Is but, he still alive? I uh, don't think so. No, did he die like a long time ago? Refer to it. <laughs> I'm, I'm just actually, wondering if he's ever done yeah. anyone's art <laughs> album artwork. <laughs> Not only is he done like you know a lot of alien movies, Prometheus and all that stuff, but is he still he alive? Did, uh, no, he died in 2014. Oh, yeah, recently. So I was 74. So he could have done an album cover. Well, that's because uh, he uh, he did the one that surprised me is uh, Carcass. He did Heartwork. What? Yeah, dude. He made the cover of Heartwork. Yeah, I never knew that either. Holy shit! That makes complete sense though, looking at it now. You know. So he's done metal covers. Yeah. Oh my god! I never. Well, knew we'll that. have. We'll stop talking. <laughs> stop talking. We're gonna save this. All right. We gotta save this. I'm gonna write that down. God, what? <laughs> what? The guy that made Alien did metal covers. Oh. And uh, well, never mind. <laughs> well, what? I, I, what did, I, I did, was gonna say, you know that. Uh, I I I, I know you've seen uh, Corn Live. They, his uh, his mic stand. No way. Yeah, dude. It's he the made same guy. Corn's mic stand. Yeah, uh, you know that crazy looking like. Yeah, I know it. Ryan actually had a guitar that was fairly certain he still has it. One of those. Oh wow. Yeah. Oh wow. He made guitars too. Like straight. I I don't really know exactly what the. There was two of them. I think they were a limited run. I don't. I think he only made. Ibanez? Like 500 or so of them. Holy shit, that's so cool. Yeah. I've always really liked that style, too, of his, that, like, um, I don't even really know what you'd call it. It's, like, futuristic, like, I guess, I mean, you said it earlier, but it was, like, sur- you know, like surrealism or whatever. Sort of. I think that, yeah. yeah his style is fucking crazy. So, we're going to talk about Gigi Geiger, or HR, what's his name? HR Geiger or Gigi Geiger? I don't know why I fucked that up. HR guy. Guys. HR guy. Yeah. Just tell me if you find out if he did anyone else's besides Carcass. At all. Don't tell me who, but... Yeah, he's... He's, he's done others? Yeah. He's done a bunch? Yeah. Okay, so we'll just have a whole fucking thing on him. <laughs> all right, good. I've Holy always, shit. I've always wanted to get, like, a... I don't know if it would be, like, a sleeve or just, like, a like a tattoo of some kind of, like... Like, that sort of style, but, like, kind of, like... Like ripped skin, sort of, Hell and yeah. then like having it like inside, sort mm-hmm. of. You know what I mean? I always thought that would be kind of like cool. the like your like the alien yeah. arm under your arm. Yeah, that'd be sick. <laughs> that'd be fucking That's sick. Yeah, I've been throwing around. That'd be a good one. 
tattoo I always wanted, and it's probably kind of fucking corny as fuck, but I always wanted uh, Dio's hand making the Maloik, and then at the bottom of his hand, like, have it be, like, a clasp, and on both sides, there's, like, chains coming off. The hand would be on my shoulder, and the chains would be running all down my arm, and in each chain link, in the proper lettering, are my band's names, my favorite band's names. Yo. Probably do that in each chain link, right? Probably do that. It's like chain link for Iron Maiden, chain link for ACDC, chain link for Guns N' Roses, Uh, chain link for Slayer, you know, Lamb of God. That's that's pretty pricey. That's probably expensive. Yeah, that'd be sick though. I wanted, yeah, that's an idea I've had for a long, long time actually since since I was younger, a lot younger. Never, I still don't have a single tattoo though. Me neither. I, you know, I I kind of like, I came up with that idea and I'm sure that this was, this was very like isolated to my personal experience, but like I had that idea, I turned 18 and then like every single person I knew got a tattoo and I was like, well, it's not cool anymore. (laughs) (laughs) So I was like, I'll hold off for now. (laughs) Never got into it. Never got into it. And I think a lot of people get into it too because they like know someone who's a tattoo artist. Hey, let me try something. Yeah. Kind of shit. That's how and a lot of people I know, that's how they got their tattoos. I've I've thought about that, but I don't know, like I just and I've I've also kind of thought about doing like a like a music sleeve or like, you know, cuz I I feel like for, well, for one and I, I know a lot of people don't really have like, you know, significant meaning to a lot of them, but I've always kind of thought like, you know, if it's if it's going to be on me for the rest of, you know, for the rest of my life. I want it to look good. Yeah, and it would. I, I'd want it to have you know hold some significance to it, but like, which is kind of why I feel like I'm just really uh, like indecisive about it. Mm, yeah, I've had a ton oh, no, of I have commitment and stuff. issues. Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, hey, same. <laughs> so I've been told. I, mean, I guess <laughs> I have commitment issues. I have a hard time with the idea of a permanent tattoo. <laughs> yeah, that's it's yeah. But, I've just had a lot of really cool ideas, but like yeah, plus. Just the money, too. I just feel like I, you know, just put it towards something else. Yeah. Which, I'll, I mean, it's, and I, I have, you know, thought about going the route of just being, like, you know, going somewhere, like, just being, like, just do something. I would say, just like, I would say, too, though, like, my, the idea of looking down at my arm and seeing my favorite band's logos still has not gotten old. Yeah. And if it hasn't gotten old in 10 years of me thinking about it, it probably won't get old. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. That's the thing. Like, there's there's some, like, like faces. Faces turn out kind of gnarly sometimes. Yeah, you don't want, like, like uh, portraits. Yeah, of, you don't want a portrait. Yeah. I've never seen. Like, I, okay, that's a lie. I've seen amazing stuff. Like, I'm sure you've seen that tattoo of Dexter. Dexter's face. You ever seen that? I think so, yeah. It's, like, amazing. Yeah. It's perfect, spot yeah. on. Like, there's there are some tattoo artists that are just incredible at that stuff, but mm. I don't think I'd ever want... I don't... Nobody's face is good enough for me. <laughs> I don't want to tattoo it, so. yeah. I don't know. It's, it's faces, and it's, I'm, it's like, band tattoos. I'm, yeah. Are, I'm way more likely to get Eddie's face or the Crypt Keeper's face yeah. than any person's face. <laughs> So, but yeah, no, I I think that'd be, uh, I'd do it. You know, I, I, I do genuinely want Dio's hand making the metal melodic symbol on my shoulder, no matter what. I genuinely do want that, uh, someday. I always really liked, um, like patterns too. I know it's kind of like. They can look dope. They can look all 3D and shit. Well, here's the other thing too. And here's what kind of sets me over, makes me want to go out and do it right now is now they got shit where your fucking shit glows in the dark and under black light. Mm. Dude, that has uh, pretty much got me sold right there. Like, if my tattoo can glow, yeah. we're talking. <laughs> I don't know if I want it to glow in the dark, though, because then I can't hide. Yeah, Sometimes you got to be able to hide. <laughs> but under black light, all day. That'd be, that'd be sick, yeah. As long as it's not, like, giving you cancer. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, like, whatever the fuck's that. in there. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> But that's that I've seen some of those and they like because they'll look one way in the normal light and turn on the black light and you'll see way more. You yeah. know what I mean? Like that's super fucking tight. The uh, the have you seen like the the scarring stuff people are doing now? No. Where like the, oh they cover up a scar? No, they. Oh. It's kind of it's really hard to explain, but um. Because I have seen some great tat. There's like there are tattoo artists and stuff that like do a lot of charity work and will 
like if someone had to have like a real intense heart surgery and their chest had to get cut open, they'll do stuff and kind of cover up the scar and yeah. stuff like that. That's, that's super dope. That's a little different. This is a little more aesthetic. So like, let me see if I can find a. Okay, so it basically like take the design out of your skin and then it scars and it heals and when it heals, it looks like that. Oh, so like that's, that's, that's like a more a permanent example. tattoo. Yeah. Well, not really. You can get rid of scar tissue now nowadays. So oh, that wow. sort of thing. Yeah. Huh. That's kind of cool. Creepy. Kind of cool. Yeah, it's <laughs> it's kind of different. Yeah. Interesting. That was a lot of detail in that one. Yeah, flowers and stuff. What did you Google search to find this? Uh, it's called scarification. Scarification. Yeah. Creepy, but cool. That just kind of looks like a red tattoo. I don't think that's actually a... That's also a red tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> but some of them, yeah, you can kind of tell. That one. Yeah. That one, too. Wild. I like the glow in the dark still the best. Ooh, that's cool. It's kind of gnarly. Yeah. Yeah, I don't. D- <laughs> Darth Vader. <laughs> Looks like someone had a Darth Vader brand and stuck it on you. <laughs> Whatever. <laughs> I know you're gonna know exactly what I'm talking about. Whenever I think of branding, think of that Key and Peele sketch. Oh my god. <laughs> Oh, Omega Pi Omega. I haven't seen that one in forever. <laughs> I forgot about that shit. He brands a dick <laughs> on his chest. <laughs> nah, man, it's not. It's okay. It kind of is. No, nah, you got a dick on your chest, <laughs> man. <It's laughs> oh my god, that is hysterically funny. Yeah. So that's all. Why'd but, you go that way? Yeah. You already committed to that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, don't worry, I'll just double it up on this side. It'll be all right. <laughs> he fucked that up so bad. <laughs> God, that shit was so funny. Oh, man, I want them to do comedy again. I know. God, they were good. Yeah, usually, I don't know. I would never brand myself. Branded a dick on his chest. Yeah. <laughs> Especially not that. Uh, <laughs> dude, that is... <laughs> just the thought of that alone is so funny. Yeah. You got, how do you even write that and then do it with a straight face? <laughs> I don't know. A lot of the stuff in that season. Mm, yeah, especially. the first season was gold. Yeah. Non-stop gold. <sighs> that's so special. I said, bitch. <laughs> God, that's funny. Should we turn around? Yeah. Yeah, all right, let's go back. Do you know, <laughs> you know what's getting a bunch of, this is getting shit on right now, but I actually thought it was pretty fucking funny is that new Adam Sandler, Chris Rock movie on Netflix. I haven't seen it. I mean, it looks all right. I thought it was funny. Yeah. I thought, it was, yeah, it definitely had, like, I loved, uh, Rachel Dratch is Adam Sandler's wife in the movie. Mm. Oh, she's funny. And, like, whenever they're, like, around the kids or everybody else, they're, like, just, like, over the top, like, sweet and nice and all that stuff. And then they'll go into a room together and just, why do you know that? <laughs> like, just start screaming at each other. <laughs> oh, my God. It is so funny. There's oh no I won't give it I won't give the joke away but God there's one part that made I was like I was dying dude <laughs> oh God yeah that one you definitely gotta see that God, it's getting shit on like the day after it came yeah, out I'm I sure. saw an IGN review that said fucking how terrible it was I was like fuck you fuck everybody that says dude People I like just- like every Adam Sandler movie like every single one. Like, the ones that even Adam Sandler fans hate, I still... Like, Spanglish, I don't understand why everybody hated Spanglish. I thought it was a great movie. Not funny at all, yeah. but, like, really good movie. He's had a couple of, like, dramas and stuff yeah. that he's done that... You know, I never saw, like, Punch Drunk Love, I don't think. Yeah, I never saw that one either. And I never saw the one where the guy gets cancer. Joseph Gordon-Levitt and Seth Rogen and Adam Sandler, I think, are all in it. Um... I can't remember the name of it. But I... It's- I've been told it's really, really good. Hmm. Maybe it's not Joseph Gordon. No, it is Joseph Gordon Levitt, yeah. Sandy Wexler or something like that? Or is that a different one? Sandy Wexler is a different one. Is it? Okay. Then I Am don't... I thinking of Punch Drunk Love? You might be. Or did I just say that? No, I just said I've never seen Punch Drunk Love. No, it's another one. It's I think it's got funny in the name or something like that. But yeah, Seth Rogen's in it. Oh, is it... Uh, it's not funny. Is it Funny People? Yeah. Is that the name? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. That's it. That's it. Yeah. That's it. I never saw that one, but I heard it's really good. Yeah. The oh, I, okay, I lied. There's one Adam Sandler movie that I've genuinely never been able to sit through. I've tried to watch it three times. I've fallen asleep every time. And that was, uh, fuck. I don't remember the name of it. It's the one where he played his twin. Jack and Jill. Oh, yeah. yeah I can't get through that one. Yeah. But every other one that was a weird I one. love that yeah. I've seen. Every <laughs> other one I'm 
that I've seen I love. And that's not to say there aren't funny. I didn't. There wasn't a couple scenes that I laughed in that movie, but like all in all, I was like, oh my god. <laughs> yeah, that's it's very uh, Mrs. Doubtfire kind of kind of style. It's not like, as good. Yeah, Norbit esque. Yeah, I, yeah, <laughs> put along lines of that. Yeah, but most of his all the ones that have been on Netflix, I, <laughs> I've enjoyed. It's just hard because like. He's been doing movies for so long. And, like a lot of times, it seems like he's just playing the same characters, mm-hmm. which I, I, you know, I get, I understand. Which you know, and on some level, it's what we want to see. Yeah, you know, it's the thing that bums me out the most is how he's not, like I. I don't know if I'd like it now, but back in the '90s, it would have probably been cool to see a Happy Gilmore sequel or a Billy Madison sequel, mm. Waterboy sequel. Dude, Waterboy's hilarious. Waterboy's one of the funniest I, fucking I, movies ever made. Yeah, I love that movie. I do think one sequel he could pull off, totally pull off now, Little Nicky. Nobody talks about that I'd movie. love a Little Nobody. Nicky, too. <laughs> that I was a good love one. A li- Dude, yeah. it's I the most metal Adam Sandler movie ever. <laughs> See, I don't remember a whole lot of it, because it was a long time ago when I saw it. Two but. of the main characters, and there's two metalheads. Yeah. Ozzy's in it. I think Zach Wilde's in it, too. I think he shows up. I don't know. I always really liked uh, Mr. Deeds. Oh, my God. Mr. Deeds is great. That... The first time... I saw that movie in theaters, and the first time I ever saw the scene with the fruit punch in the water <laughs> fountain and the foot scene, yeah. I was in tears oh, laughing dude, yeah. so hard. I was uh, absolutely crying. Yeah. Could not breathe. The foot scene especially when he goes, Oh, my God! Why would you do that? Oh, oh I was... In tears, dude. <laughs> and that guy, that I forget the actor's name, the acts opposite him in that scene, but I love that guy. I Very very sneaky. Yeah. <laughs> scared the shit out of me. Here are your socks, sir. <laughs> <laughs> you, you, your your father always let me change his socks before he would before and after he would go to bed. I li- <laughs> I like feet. I like feet. I, I, I do not know why. <laughs> <laughs> God, that's a good movie. I should watch that again sometime. He's, they're, they're like, when she's talking about the uh, the very end part, we're uh, in the courtroom. And it's like, <laughs> it's talking about all the people. Like, what what did you want to be when you were, like, growing up or when you were younger and stuff? And Oh, yeah. Like, I wanted to be a man. <laughs> <laughs> that explains a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and there was that one dude that was the Monopoly guy. Oh, yeah. He just throws shit like that in his <laughs> movies, dude. Like in Waterboy. No, you're wrong, Colonel Sanders. Yeah. Oh, Mom my. was right. Oh, my God. That's just random shit he throws in there for yeah. no reason. The Penguin and Billy Madison. Yeah. Oh, my. What is that? It's just hysterical. It's nothing but hysterical. Especially at the end when they're dancing with Chris Farley. Yeah. Oh, my God. Oh, that that whole part where they're uh, the, uh, the field trip. The kids' lunches yeah. is one of the funniest scenes in any <laughs> film ever, and all it is is three dudes sitting there laughing. Yeah, like God. But it, but the thing that almost makes it so funny is Chris Farley's laugh. Yeah, and you have his to whole, have that. His whole like role in that is <sighs> the best. <laughs> I said quiet. <laughs> <laughs> During this damn bus of brown. Son of a bitch. <laughs> He's just so angry. Like, yeah. oh, God. <laughs> he, I, like, I don't care what the fuck anybody says. Like, for my money, he is the funniest man to ever live. Like, yeah. he has brought me to tears and laughter more times than any human being that has ever been alive. Yeah, man. Anything he's ever done. <laughs> the part, The part that gets me is, like, when he's after he's after he says that line about like turning the bus around, and he just like holds his breath yeah. for like twenty seconds. His, his face gets like purple, so red, dude. It's vibrant. Yeah. Like, if that shit was on four K, it would be just <laughs> illuminating. Like, ah oh, man, he's talking about his like. So I, you know, I once knew somebody that went out with Veronica or whatever. He's like, no, he you didn't. Started is that uh, <laughs> me and Veronica? Yeah. No, you didn't. <laughs> well, <laughs> no, I didn't. But I knew somebody that uh, no, 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 you didn't. didn't. <laughs> no, yeah, no, right. I didn't. But you can imagine. Could, though, could what you it imagine would be if like. I did? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> Do you ever 
ever see Almost Heroes? Have you ever seen that? Uh, I don't think so. It's like the forgotten Chris Farley movie. It's, he's got a movie with Matthew Perry from Friends. Oh, that's weird. Where they like on the Lewis and Clark expedition. What? They're like, yes, yeah, they want to discover. Great. They want to discover the new world. And Lewis and Clark are like a mile ahead of them the whole movie, kind of thing. <laughs> They're like right behind them, trying to oh. get there, and they never do. It's hysterical. What's it called? Almost Heroes. Almost Heroes. Yeah, or something that. like that. I think that that's something like the plot. I know <laughs> Lewis and Clark are in it. Oh my god, it's so fucking funny though. It's kind of uh, black, sh- like a lot of the comedy is kind of like black sheep. Black sheep. Like, <laughs> Dude, there are, there are so many movies that, like, in that sort of time frame that were just lighting in a bottle. Oh, yeah, That dude. could probably never, like, and it's it's the Super Troopers thing. Yeah. Yeah. I don't like, even to talk about that, but, like, I, I gotta be honest, like, I, just, it kind of missed the mark for me a little Super bit. Super Troopers 2? Yeah. I mean, it wasn't as good as the first. It was it was funny, but like, it was very I, funny. I feel like they kind of like recycled some stuff, and it's kind of the same with the new Adam Sandler movie. Like it's it's you know not as much recycled stuff, but like mm. they were both good, but just they they didn't have me on the floor. No, yeah. you know, and it's been dude, it's uh, it's this, it, comedy and horror mm. are the two like hard genres, man, like. When it's it's a lightning in a bottle. You're yeah. absolutely right about that. For the stuff now, you know, because what's lightning in a bottle for us isn't for somebody else, and vice versa. That's true. Which is fine, but at the same time, when you go like you know, ten, fifteen years without anything scaring you or making you laugh that hard, except for the old stuff. No, yeah. it's been a long time. It's and I would say close to as long that I've been in a movie theater laughing as hard as I was scared. You know. Mm-hmm. That's real. It's It just doesn't happen very often. I am thinking it's... I'm looking forward to the new Johnny Knoxville movie. What's that? You haven't seen this? Mm. Oh, shit. God damn it. Now I can't remember the title. But the premise is... Uh, it's all true story. Like, very true story. Um, there was a guy at one point in time that had, like, a, a amusement park. Mm. And, like, all the rides were, like, shitty and dangerous... And not good. And so so someone, like, in the next county over or whatever was building a new dope-ass nice amusement park and was going to run his out of business. Mm. So he just decided no rules, no regulations. Oh, man. The mo- and it became known as, like, the amusement park with the most injuries ever. <laughs> like, so it's, you know, it's Johnny Knoxville and Jackass guys just doing that. It's, you know it's going to be. Because uh. that's kind of the thing is, like, Super Troopers. Um, Broken Lizard in general. You can also did a few of the Johnny Knoxville movies. I think they had something to do with The Ringer. Um, oh my god! Hysterical. The Ringer. Hysterical. How like? Uh, and Dukes of Hazard. I love <laughs> their was, Dukes of Hazard. That was good too. Uh, yeah. Those are all like kind of those. Also those Lightning Bottle. But what I'll say about them at least, and even a lot of Adam Sandler movies, is what movies don't have now, and it's Dirt Roads. Show me a movie on a back fucking road. You know what I mean? Show me, like, that dirty, like, everything doesn't have to look crisp and clean anymore. Like, we have that. We've got the Avengers. Show me show me what I'm seeing every day. You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, like, huh, yeah. just that, that gritty, really raw kind of. kind of comedy. Like, that's, that's where a lot of it, I think, comes from. I, that's why I'm looking forward to I think it comes out. It's just a summertime dirt road it movie. It sounds, yeah. Is what we what I we haven't had in a long time, mm-hmm. and kind of so I'm excited about that. It's bet, yeah, because like it, yeah. I guess those are kind of the two the two genres that are the hard. It's most I think it's mostly because it's, it's all everything's kind of been done already at this point. <sighs> Can't say that though, because tomorrow we could think of something. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's always something that hasn't been done. Always a note that hasn't been played in a certain way yet, and it's because it hasn't than thought of by that specific brain. It takes everything coming together. Sometimes. Sometimes, yeah. That is true, though. I haven't really seen, like, a... Aside from, like, like stand-up stuff. Mm. Nothing that's really... Stand-up, yeah. No. But that's not a movie. You can't put that in that category. Mm. A movie... Stand-up's just... The, the, stand-up's like music. Yeah. It's that same in kind a, of art, in, in a, a way. Of, yeah. Like, the way... You know, like... I guarantee you, if you were to ever hear, like, how, like, 
like Joe Rogan or or Dave, or Dave Chappelle, you know, if you if they were to explain to you their writing process in terms of how they construct a special, mm. I would imagine it's v- just using a diff- slightly different vocabulary. I would imagine it's very similar to a song or album writing process. Is it? Is it the one with? Uh, I think they kind of talk. I, I, I think if you listen to the one with uh, Tom Segura, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm not sure if it was that one or if it was another comedian that he was talking to, but I think they kind of go in depth with that as far as like how they write their stuff. I feel like I remember something about that. Like a he, while ago, he'll write something and then like he'll be able to figure out like i guess like it's like the best way to figure out what works and what doesn't yeah when they have to pre- doing it live when yeah. they're doing when they're on tour before they film the special yeah they, they they're like the only way to figure out what works is to do it live and for an audience to see where the beats are yeah. it literally says where the beats are like yeah yeah i gotta imagine there's a lot of similarities there i i don't know if i could ever do that as far I don't as like, stand up stuff man like that's Cause it like it's it's different when you're doing music and stuff because it's it's not just you up there yeah but like what you know it's like I couldn't imagine trying to be funny in a room full of like full of, like arenas full of people but at the same time if like, if it's uh, I guess if you're like if you've written out your stuff well yeah enough, exactly it just it's not becomes, off the cuff you yeah, know yeah because think about it in terms of like I mean it's it's storytelling so it's like yeah. you know yeah it's storytelling that's a really good way to look at it yeah. Usually, you know, obviously there are some, there are many different genres, probably, of stand-up comedy. You got stuff like Mitch Hedberg. Yeah. It's like... Oh, dude. <laughs> you know? Yeah. I used this, to get high. I still I do. I still do. But I used to, too. <laughs> yeah. Like, or there's the great storytelling, like a, J- like a Joe Rogan, Chappelle, or Coco Diaz. Yeah. Prior. I've been really into... Uh, Kinnison. Yeah. Like, uh, like the music comedians. Like, uh, like Bo, the D Bo Burnham's really funny. Yeah. Oh, yeah, and too, yeah. yeah. I mean, as far as I'm concerned, there's only, there's only the D my friend. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll give you that. Dude, I've been finding some <laughs> shit of theirs. Like they did a old, they did a commercial for the Osborne show back in the early like 2000s. Really? Yeah. Huh. They did a commercial for the Osborne show and they were like in the, a few seconds of a deal mu- music video. I was trying to remember. I, cause I, somebody showed me that. I think I, I did. Was, yeah. Yeah. You're just hanging out playing one of his songs or something. Pass me the bomb. Yeah. You're the bringer <laughs> yeah, of that, reefer. That's right. Yeah. That shit was amazing. <laughs> God, I love the D. Tenacious D. Kyle Kinane's really funny. Kyle Kinane's was, really funny. Like, I, I was listening to some of his stuff this morning, and, like, and I know I've said it before, but, like, dude, just, like, something about, like, his act or, like, just the way that he presents shit is, like... It he's just, hysterical. Yeah. He you makes know, me laugh probably more than anybody. He's the voice of, like, Comedy Central. Yeah. Yeah. He was talking about, like, finding miracles. <laughs> he's like, yo, the, that's, that's like, the world's way, like, the best way that, like, it's just the world's way of surprising you. Like, showing that it can still surprise you. And then he goes in to talk about <laughs> how he burnt his laundry. <laughs> 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 pretty great oh like, my God. i didn't even know that was a possibility but here we are it happened <laughs> like wow i <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> it's in the laundromat and just i like, pulled out this crater that was used to be my favorite <laughs> shirts or something like that i don't know but yeah he's uh, hell yeah <laughs> it's the world's way of telling you it can still surprise you <laughs> yeah he's a good one I like good storytelling comedians, not and like not not so much like the politically driven stuff. Yeah, because I feel like at this point it's it's just like satire. That's just kind of like everybody's telling when, their different version well, of the same joke. When real life has yeah. become satire, yeah. it's hard to really find where to go. Yeah, I haven't, and I know because uh, Cat Williams kind of went that way. Yeah, I am. I didn't. I he put out something new recently, but I haven't really. I don't know, just I the, watched it. the title of it kind of, I don't know, turned me away from it, I guess. Yeah, it was all right. Yeah. His earlier ones, though, were amazing. He goes on stage and, like, tries to, like, his his intro song, like, hustling. So he gets the guy to yeah to <laughs> replay it, like, five times. Yeah. Yeah, so he's, like, pimping, pimping. <laughs> yeah. Like that stuff, yeah, that's yeah. amazing. Just saying. Have you ever gone back and watched Sam Kinison? Um... You should check out some of his shit, dude. I know the name. I'm you very, should, like he's he's like if 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 
comedian. If there was ever a heavy metal comedian, it's Sam Kinison. Ah, uh, yeah, he was like he was like the Axl Rose of comedians. There's a fucking once you listen to him, this will make this will be oh, a lot yeah. funnier to you. Yeah. But there's a line in the office where M- Michael goes, "I need silence or Sam Kinison to get in the mood." <laughs> it's like, wait, <laughs> I need silence or is someone literally screaming at you? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, speaking of the office, not to like steer off or whatever, but like I <laughs> I completely forgot about the uh the CPR thing. <laughs> yeah, when he cuts the face off yeah. the dummy. Oh my like yeah. I and like the the only thing that um made me uh kind of like remember that part was I was I was on YouTube or whatever, just kind of flipping through stuff, and it was like the best six minutes of TV. I saw that video, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> It just escalates. Yeah, it keeps so going so fast. Like, yeah. does he have an organ donor card? Yeah. What, what about he is? He is. We're in the middle of a battlefield. He has no arms, no legs. And I'm supposed to like. Are we really supposed to help him? Yeah. Like, is there any saving him at this point? No, is like, there? What's his? What's his like? <laughs> <laughs> What's his, like, value of life at this point? Yeah. Something like that. Like, oh, my God. <laughs> oh, God, that shit is hysterical. <clears throat> and then the scene, like, immediately after that, like, cuts right to David Wallace. He's like, why did you cut the face off the dummy? <laughs> I didn't think in the movie it was realistic. Yeah. Turned out it was. <laughs> oh, my God. There are so many little, like, especially with, uh... With, with Jim's character with, oh. with that character like just and like I started to notice it more as I was watching like later ep- like later seasons and stuff but like just the, like his subtle way of like breaking character and like looking at the camera yep. that he does like <laughs> dude and if you dude so I it's gotten to the point where I've watched this shit so much that I've uh I now like look for them breaking Cause there, I and I've found two episodes where you can see Jim in the corner, laughing, just hysterically laughing, like with his hand over his mouth every time to try to block it from camera. No. But he is cracking <laughs> on camera right there. Like one of the uh, one of the parts is when like Phyllis got flashed and <laughs> Michael was like making fun of her for it. You can see him in one like the camera cuts a lot in like. The, you see him one second, he's sitting there normal. The next cut, you see him in the corner, just a face red, hand over his mouth, and his <laughs> whole body's, like, laughing. Yeah. And then the one, uh, I'm pretty sure you can see a cut of him laughing in the part where, uh, oh, wait, no, that was a different episode. Shit, now I don't remember which one it was. But, yeah, I found it, like, the other night. I, I was watching an episode the other night, and I was like, oh, got another one. <laughs> And it's always, like, quick things, too. Yeah, so quick. Just... <laughs> God, yeah, some of that. Have you ever watched bloopers? Dude, oh, some of favorite. those are yeah. fucking amazing. Like, there are some really good uh, deleted scenes, too. Yeah. Like, in the episode where Dwight finds a joint in the parking lot, there's a deleted scene that shows who did it. Oh, really? Yeah, it's I one of the fucking... That. It shows, like, the morning where, like... The building's opening up, and it shows two of the warehouse guys walking in, and one of them throws it. <laughs> <laughs> That's it? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> Turns into this whole big thing. Well, That's such a... Yeah. Yeah, um, there's a lot of deleted scenes that add a lot. Like, I really wish there was, a, like, versions of episodes that were, like, uncut. Mm. No deleted scenes. Give it, like, I don't know. Because the show's been over for a little while now, at least. So, I figure after a certain point, like, you know... Some of that's going to surface, but maybe not. Yeah. Could be. It's still so fucking funny. <clears throat> the one where he, uh, he runs the 5K. Michael runs the 5K for, like, some oh, charity. Yeah. Because... No, the fucking rabies. Yeah, because yeah. he hit... Well, is is that the same one where he hits... Uh... It's the next one. Hits Meredith with his yeah. car, sends her to the hospital, yeah. finds out she has rabies. So he does a 5K to raise awareness, ra- yeah. rabies awareness about a disease that's been cured. Yeah. So <laughs> about, like, the pasta... I don't remember what it was. Yeah, he was like, he was carbo-loading. Yeah, that's right. That's what it was. He ate like a pound of Alfredo <laughs> pasta and then went on a five mi- or 5K run. Yeah. He was like, oh my God, so much Alfredo sauce. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> 
just that that shot at the very end of it like after it like w- with like the cutaway where they're talking to him <laughs> like you can tell that's just like genuine like <laughs> exhausted and like yeah. just oh man like i am i am a few short seconds away from like passing out completely like <laughs> like falling over Moe's. Anytime Moe's is involved, it's hysterical. Yeah. Oh, my God. Were you painting in the dark? <laughs> <laughs> they come in to a black room, they turn on the lights, and there's someone standing there painting. <laughs> <laughs> Some of that shit, dude. <laughs> yeah. It's the best. That show makes me laugh. That's but a- it's not a movie. No. Talking about in theater. Ah, shit. You want to wrap this up? I could probably cut this into two episodes at this point. Holy shit. Three hours? (laughs) Three hours. Well, give or take, like, 20 minutes of... Cut. It'll probably only add up to 10 minutes, but... Yeah. Sounds good. All right. Well, we'll be back next time with a fucking more album artwork artists. Yeah. Yeah. Hopefully, uh... Well... I'll talk about it. <laughs> There's something I wanted to bring up to you, but about the the song. Well, you can bring it up in three, two, one. <laughs>